she desperately acts on my capitalism till I all go wrong. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> how's it doing, hello, everybody? Hello. <laughs> I, I gotta say that 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 was that was actually pretty good. I don't I don't that, hate that. That one took me a little bit by surprise. Well done, mm -hmm. well done. Thank you, thank you, Z Team. So little little bit of a different stream today. Yeah. Uh, Mojave is going to be our gracious host because today is mostly going to be focused on uh, me and Riley Red Nines having a mutual autism resonance moment. And Pete is also <laughs> here. Don't forget Pete. It's going to be so long to like point at like where Discord, my Discord like thing is, so I could point at you guys. Yeah. I'm not here. To, I'm not here to be autistic. I'm here to try my best to bridge the gap between Riley and CT and everyone else. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, Bean so, is here to be our sort of audience surrogate for the the people in chat that um, you know know a little bit about the occult, but probably haven't spent a stupid amount of time thinking and learning about it, also, like me and Riley have. Also, also like me, I've Chad. If you guys don't know, I also don't really know Jack about this. I think and, it's, I think it's neat. It's why I am friends with these people, but I don't and, know things. <laughs> Mojave is here to be an audience surrogate for the people that have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <Woo> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I have fired up uh, fired up a fun little game you might have heard of called Red Dead 2. This will mostly just be background noise, give me something to do, give you guys something fun to look at, have some nice pleasant sounds while these guys go off. We'll be looking at chat, answering your guys' burning questions, uh, starting right about now-ish. Yeah, um, and I, I have chat open in the side window, so I can keep an eye on, uh, like, what people are saying, if you want to yeah. focus on your game. Yippee. I also Yay. will have chat open all stream. Excellent. Yay. I like, here. I like so, so half of my questions about occultism that I get on Tumblr, yeah. I just don't answer. Um, <laughs> because I don't like to type. That's really my thing. Is I, I prefer to say the words out loud. So like, if you catch me on Discord or like in a Twitch stream, then you can hear a, like an actual like answer from me. But usually, I just like even if I answer the shit, I'm just like, oh, I answered this years ago, so I just expect you to know this. Or like, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you like a pointer to like resources on stuff, and I won't right. like explain very much. Mm -hmm, no, that's mm -hmm. there's there's definitely questions that I get like so often that the uh, like the amount of effort it would take me to answer it is just like not really worth it because it, I would end up repeating the same ask every single day, you know, yeah. and I don't really want to do that. Tumblr broke its search function. Somebody was asking me today for an ask that um, like basically about why I practice what I do. Um, and uh, yep. because they, they said it had some like influence on them and they wanted to like see it again and reread it. Um, but right, right. like the new like mobile Tumblr update fucking broke it. Like I can't, I can't find anything like more recent than 2014 on my blog if I search like the word ritual, you know? No, it's, it's like worse than before. I, I don't know what it, like, they did. They really, I have no like, idea what they, they did. Like, it's, it's all to suppress porn really is like. Yeah, because, yeah. Like, but but like it, it affects the whole rest of the website and like what made uh, tumblr good was i could search things and find what i was looking for that's kind of what the whole like you know you could search a type of art and find what you were looking for on here tumblr. let's see uh, uh, door can, yeah. let's see cloud in the sky asks could you make an faq uh yes i'm writing an entire book that is essentially <laughs> going to be my faq I I, I love I love how your backstory for the FAQ is like uh, for the book is like you've tried to do that so many times and you're just like fuck. I guess I, Wait, I guess I'm writing a book now. I can't give good answers to shit because it's everything in everything in the fucking occult is predicated on like knowing what some like Italian dickhead from the 15th century <laughs> thought about a particular kind of heresy that happened in the fourth century and it all like compounds yeah. on itself like it's so you have to know everything to know anything literally and <laughs> it sounds like bullshit but it's a hundred percent exactly how that works like you like literally that, just like it's so specific that's the fucking problem with this information being esoteric it is literally designed <laughs> to be hard to read <laughs> right right yeah, exactly no, and people will see a phrase and be like oh i know what this means based on what the words sound like to me in current day no you don't you really really no. don't 
No, no you don't. Yeah. Oh my I, I god. Heard, right, right away, I heard you talking about like currents a little while ago, like maybe off chat or off stream or something like that. Yeah. And like flows. Was it flows? No. 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 I was talking about like. Oh, the Tomura current. current. In, in like, in like. No. No. Something trans- completely sense. fucking in different. Like actually. Trans- <laughs> full to have a tie sense, and that is a, oh. that is a that is hard to understand without the context of like. Yeah. So Thalema I had. And- Oh yeah, kind of good thing. luck getting into fucking like sh- like Shabbati Shabbatian Kabbalah without like literally like an entire theology course worth of context. Yeah, so I had he- no fucking clue what you what you were talking about there, and I was like, oh wow, this is like a whole fucking universe that don't, I haven't tapped into. So uh, so yeah, no, like so like the like a current is like a um. Actually, is this a question that I really want to answer right now? Do we want to start you, you this off by getting into fucking Kabbalah <laughs> let's, and Shabbatai V? Let's, let's no, start no, with no, something. this is not Shabbatai V. This is Andrew Chumbly and Kenneth Grant. Ah. Okay, so, so like, people who've read Shabbatai V. People who've read... Uh, okay, I don't know about Kenneth Grant, but... Um, yeah, yeah, okay, Definitely fair. Chumbly was kind of informed by that, but he's, like... He's kind of informed by everything. He was one of those people who had read absolutely everything. Yeah, right? yeah. And he was like an initiated Sufi, an initiated God. Kashmiri Shaivist. He was an initiated like, like, like and not not in like the bullshit way that people are like, oh, I went to I went to India and like came back with esoteric knowledge. It's like no, he like did the work. It's it's kind of impressive. Yeah, no, and I, 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 I heard you talk about fucking Chumbly a lot. Like, damn, my boy. Like he's. I can't believe, like, if if he had, like, lived beyond 2005, we would be in, like, an era. Like, I don't know how to explain no, Andrew no, Chumbly. I, like, we're kind of agree. in an Andrew Chumbly, like, era. Like, people are, like, now that, like, the work is being published and, like, people have had a few years to read, like, the Dragon Book of Essex and, like, kind of figure oh, out what the God. fuck is going on. It's, like, spreading, like, beyond the circle. It's... But, like, I think, like, you know, if he had really, like, gotten to produce his, like, uh, third work and like all of his other like shit that he was working on. Um, is Chumbly is Chumbly Grimoire of the Toad or is that somebody else? That's Grimoire of the Golden Toad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Okay. If when you're if you were to like compare the two, like what's what's your opinions there? Like what's the relationship between those two texts? Because those, I've the, the relationship between the Dragon Book of Essex and the Grimoire of the Golden Toad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is stuff that I don't know if I can. <laughs> That's about. entirely uh, fair. So, so, um, uh, let's say, um, Grimoire of the Golden Toad is something you're supposed to do after you've done eight years of Dragon Book of Essex cycles. Gotcha. Um, and that'll okay. take you. That'll take the work to the next place that it needs to go. It's like, it's like a kind of like a higher initiation like you can do it whenever you want but like really what it's intended for is you've done Azuisha, you've done the work of the first circle the work of the first like ritual space and then the second circle is a second ritual space that you connect to the first circle and that's the work of the dragon book of essex um, right okay you do that for you do that for like eight years and mm-hmm. then the the grimoire of the golden toad takes you to the third circle which i'm not going to I I feel like I'm going to like like misspeak if I even try to say no no at all. That's that's, like it's like it's like once you've like gotten so deep cut into things that like the work itself is revealing things to you, like that's kind of what that's for. Um, it it, green green hexagons in chat says uh, green hexagons in chat says I'm gonna have like 90 tabs open by the end of this conversation. (laughs) Yeah, I was like uh, um, every 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 like second every minute. Hang on, I have to Google something. Hang on, I have to Google something. (laughs) Hang on, I have to. (laughs) If you if you guys have like links to any of this stuff, if people are like curious of like to build a reading Uh, list, obviously this shit sounds like this shit sounds like the. A li- like occult literature equivalent of building up your resistance to iacane powder, but be, like, you know, <laughs> it just stuff. Is. <laughs> put it, put it in the put it in the live blocking chat so people can uh can do do their own research. There's yeah, a lot yeah. Of criticism about poison, like Chumbly's successor, uh, Daniel Shulky, has a book about poisoning himself. Um, <laughs> oh, pa- oh shit! <laughs> so I got <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Okay, okay, Distortion in chat asks, uh, what do you mean when you say the work? What is the work? Mm. Yeah, good luck, dickhead. Answer this one. <laughs> this is a loaded question. <laughs> um, okay, I, I can probably do a better job of answering this one. The, 
You can contextualize work... this historically. I can only... Yeah. So, okay, the work is a term that originally came from alchemy, basically yes. meaning, like, the creation of a philosopher's stone, the union of spirit and matter. Ba basically, one of the major goals of historical alchemists was to figure out a way to transmute base metals into, you know, higher purity metals, like turn lead into gold. Mm -hmm. Now, that would have been a very powerful, like, economic thing to do. Like, it would have been... But more importantly, it would be proof of your understanding of the world, right? It's like, like if you can do that, it proves that you have a level of control over the physical yeah. world. Um, like you, you understand God's creation in a, to on a level deep enough that you can turn any substance into any other substance. That is sort of the goal of the quote unquote capital G capital W great work. Yes. This this has filtered up through the ages, up through the, like, the high medieval era, into the Renaissance, like, up through the, the Rosicrucians and the Golden Dawn, and become a sort of term for the ultimate goal of the wizard. And I'm speaking very much from my, uh, my, my right-hand path perspective here, of, you know, it's, it's about having, having a sort of complete and total understanding of the world in a very magical sense of the word that is hard to describe and like the idea being that once you understand it on a deep enough level you will have a degree of control over it and yourself how am i doing riley um the great work is the path of return up the tree of life the the the, the union with god um that's my like hot take is like it, it, it started you know the, the the term like comes from like the alchemical mm -hmm. like people but like like when it's used in like current day or like when people talk about the right, work right. they're talking about like their path or like the things they do all together like you know um in in s such a shorthand as to like not um not exclude all the like aspects of their like practice i don't know um yeah yeah, yeah. the the sort of the like okay if the goal of christianity is to sort of achieve a, a union with Christ, mm -hmm. the, the goal of a magician is the great work, or the work. Uh, and I think that yeah. kind of helps answer Jessica Pinkman's question. How do you draw parallels between the great work and Gnosis? I think that th that, that, seem, that seems like a pretty straight line. Gnosis is things. like progress on the, along the like path of the great work. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, it's, mm. it's, it's God giving you a little treat. <laughs> okay, giving you a, so you have a little, little way to put that. Yeah. I see treats. <laughs> when you've been a good puppy. I have a question. Um, for the people in chat who, let's say, have like zero knowledge, path has been mentioned a couple of times. Um, can we elaborate on what that means in this context? Right no. hand path shit. Oh. <laughs> Riley, come on. <laughs> Sorry. When someone says, can you elaborate on that? I immediately, David Lynch, like, no. No. <laughs> no. Um, no. <laughs> wait, 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 someone said quick wizards, what would be the funniest occultism for Joe Biden to announce his conversion to? It's oh, obviously good Salema. fucking question. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> well, okay. wait. Okay, hang on, hang on. But like, mm -hmm. I feel like we can do better than here. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, here. okay let's, let's, let's workshop this. It would be very <laughs> funny if Joe Biden said he was a theosophist. <laughs> I think <laughs> Typhonian <laughs> Thalema. Yeah, I was literally going to say Typhonian Philema. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's, he, he believes in, like, having sex with space aliens and also the... Yeah, no, that would be hilarious. Joe Biden and Typhonian Philema is the version of Philema that has alien sex in it. And, uh, and Lovecraft. Uh, and Lovecraft, yeah. Moving, yeah. To C Japan, C can... moving to Japan and becoming a Shintoist priest. <laughs> CT, can you do your best? Listen, Jack, about uh, about this this alternate universe, Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, listen, Jack. Every man and every woman is a star, and <laughs> every number is infinite. There is no difference. <laughs> God damn it! You children under the star, take your fill and will of love. Listen, Where, Jack. With whom you will. Listen, you listen, fat. Today. It's all about the root and the flower. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, you're, not, god you're not meandering enough says dorothy let's hear fat choose ye an island dung it about with engineering of war fortify it <laughs> give you a war this, engine i am the warrior lord of the Biden 40s point? the 80s power before me and are abased <laughs> oh, god 
I have, to, I, have, I have no reason to find this funny, but I do. Green hexagons, is that how you say it? And then, like, distressed emote. <laughs> <laughs> Were you saying it like Thelma or something? I read, I, I read a Thelma a couple times. I, I would... Don't blame you. Wait, Riley. <laughs> Capital, yes. Riley, do you do you know about um, Crowley's like proto-thalema, like what he was calling it? What do you mean? Like, okay, so Crowley before he before he started thalema, like before he wrote the Book of the Law, he had this like he was kind of toying around with the idea of starting a religion, and he was kind of workshopping it with other like former members of the Golden Dawn. And do you know what he called it? Oh, I don't know what he called it. Crowleyanity. Oh my oh, god. <laughs> you didn't even try. <laughs> like, but he, Alistair! That's not, even, that's not even a good name. I want to live in the universe in which that's the one that took prevalence. I, 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 I used to make a they, fucking they, joke they, that like, if I like, started a religion, it would be like, easily called Sebastianity. Yeah, at, like, at, at like a certain point, because like... He he wrote like quite a few things about not wanting it to be called yep. Proleanity and not wanting people to like do things in his name or like yeah you know, yeah like mis misinterpret things with his name on their tongues basically right and um, then he like went and like he like went and like added himself to the central cosmology of Thalema like what what's his self insert called again it's like Tumegatherion. Yeah, so the beast and the scarlet woman are like different offices that you yeah yeah like can inhabit and hold <laughs> as like a, an individual thelemite um uh they, they, they're like roles that you kind of don and play like to make yeah, a theory yeah. on it, like <laughs> he was inhabiting the like yeah cactus brandy says <laughs> these sound like bitcoin names great beast. <laughs> what Cactus <laughs> Brandy says all of these sound like Bitcoin names. Megatherion <laughs> is the great beast in Greek. Uh, a so couple, a you're couple gotcha. of um, okay. You're supposed to like embody them. What? What? To what end? To the means of what end? What? For, for ritual purposes. For, yeah, yeah, but like, <laughs> you know, for spells and whatnot. You, you, you want the answer? Yeah, sure, it's for sex magic. Um. Yeah, there's a reason you're doing the sex magic, and that folds into like the the system that the Golden Dawn exists in, which itself folds into the work, and you know yada and yada, so on, it's, and and the possum and consumes its own ass and itself. whatnot. <laughs> um, real uh, real quick, uh, a couple callouts. Hi Dion. Yeah, you can uh, re real quick, maybe take the uh, uh mute thing off if you can hear us. But yeah, you can pin messages, pin shit that we might read. Uh, someone, someone gave a call out, Sebastianity is a great name for a religion, thank you for noticing that. <laughs> it kinda is. Uh, that yeah, was, actually. Like, like that, that was the joke that like I used to fucking make, it's like, yeah, if I ever started a church, it would be called that. Like, Crowley doesn't have that fucking excuse. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> let's see, let me see, uh, but, I'm trying like, to like, find other like, things to read. Things wait, to was the vision and the voice before... The um oh don't ask me about this timeline I don't lot. know it I don't know it uh wait no I think it was two I, years I, after that right I'm I'm pretty sure Book of the Law came first hmm. there was like there was like channeled works that he did that like presaged his like Book of the Law shit like um yeah yeah it might have uh, been just the, okay so I think he did the first two aethers of the Vision and the Voice like way before he worked with Victor Neuberg. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds uh, correct. And uh, then the the next, like, 28 Aethers were, like, after Victor Neuberg and had, like, all this, like, heavily, like, Thalamic stuff. Yeah, that that sounds correct, but also don't quote me on that. I, also, don't quote me on that because I could be wrong, and I could like there could be like some Thelemite who knows more than me. In let's chat, see. Like, uh, like, Dion has a question. Yeah, Sealy mm -hmm. Court official. Hey, has this has nothing to do with this? But what the fuck is mantling as opposed to channeling? Hmm. Mantling. Uh. What do you got? So okay, Hello, mantling is Wait, like is channeling you? is the. Uh, Been a long time. If you're channeling you something, it means that you will like. You are kind of acting as a conduit for a spirit that is not yours. Mantling is a lot closer to like you are putting on a mask, like you are you are wearing something. Does that make sense? 
it's like something is going through you versus like like okay if you're mantling something that doesn't necessarily mean that you are that thing ma ma it as in, as in taking like, taking up the mantle as like that i see I see. yeah it's it's like how like okay if you're if you are participating in a shakespeare play you are kind of mantling romeo does that make sense it's like mean. acting it's acting but like in a in like a special magical ritual sense hmm. does that make sense uh dion's going ah yeah. okay okay dion where did you hear the term mantling uh, he said he was, like, hearing it going around a lot lately. Huh, okay. Curious. <laughs> you know what else is going around lately? Is it the products and services that support this stream? That's right, they will find us all. One Holy day, fuck. Every, one let's day, Blue Apron will come for us all. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Let's, let's start having Just very, very, like, t like, very heady conversations while most of the chat cannot hear us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, that, like, I'll 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 call when the ad read uh, ad plug ends. I'll do I'll do some like sub call outs like right now, roughly okay. run. Take for four months. Yeah. Right now hey. I'm just fucking fucking around, uh, hunting hunting animals, trying to give a give some stuff for a taxidermy show. This is like good busy work while we talk about this. Yeah, yeah. How how's how's everything going so far? Uh, I'm trying to. It's fucking hard to find chipmunks. I'll say that. Mm. And now it's and it's raining. Uh, I've been looking at chat though. It looks like people are enjoying this. I'm having fun actually. I'm They're... having a lot of fun so far. The, the guess... last time, the last time these two went off about this in stream, it was during like the worst part of Resident Evil Seven, and I was like, <laughs> I was not at all in the in the in the space to even like engage in a funny way about what they were talking about, <laughs> and it was just oh. it was very frustrating. But <laughs> I'm so sorry. I legitimately feel bad for that. Yeah, don't, like, don't, 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 don't like worry. Like this, this is this yeah. more than makes up for that, honestly. Okay, okay. I, I just <laughs> getting ads before. Uh, no, no, like, don't, don't worry. It's a shitty. It was a shitty part of the game anyway. That boat sucked. It does suck. That boat sucks. So concept. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying oh, wait, to think of like a good. Oh, what's, what's up? Um, what's up? Yeah, right. So like, like, uh, before I forget the. Uh, so when I was. Like, uh, currents. Current is like so. Oh yeah. It's not yeah. a tradition. It's like it's like the spiritual animating force behind different traditions. So like. Right. Right. When Kenneth Grant, like, he thinks that he is tapping into a current that animated witchcraft groups in ancient Egypt, as well as his like personal witchcraft groups. Right. Right. Basically, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and with Thelema. There are, you know, there there are people that aren't like associated with Crowley or like OTO at all, but like they they are tapped into what is called the ninety three current. So they're working right. with entities like Babylon and Kronzon and mm -hmm. um, uh, Hadid Nui. Um, but they're not like, you know, they, they, they it's just the general like kind of like spiritual like animating force and like pantheon and um, techniques and uh, like. The, 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 the Kenneth Grant people believe that currents are tied to specific stars, which is a, a whole thing um, right, that I right. won't get into, but like, th they have mysticism about like certain constellations and different currents and all that. Um, hmm. But that's fun. Yeah. That's fun what thing. Uh, did you know that like the PGM actually has no astral magic in it? Ooh. We yeah. your pussy. Yeah, it's well, no, it literally hadn't been invented yet. Um, like the first instance of ma of astral magic in pretty much the entire, like the entirety of the Western paradigm. Do you mean asterism or like astral projection? As in like magic involving stars in any capacity. What huh. the fuck? Yeah, no, huh. it, it literally did not show up until about the eighth century with the Picatrix in uh, in That's... early medieval uh, the mid bleh, in the Islamic world. That's kind of wild. Huh. Right? It's uh, like, it that feels like really such, insane. right? It feels like such a, a mainstay of like Western esoterica. But it it's is. like, no, the entirety yeah. of the Greco Roman world, like astrology, was completely separate from magic. Wow. Yeah. That actually, oh, that actually makes sense. That, is like, that why um, Agrippa posited to have an understanding of the occult? You need to have an understanding of math to understand how the stars move? 
Um, actually, Agri Agrippa was drawing directly from the Picatrix because yeah. okay, uh -huh. basically Al Alkindi proposed this thing called the Stellar Ray Theory, basically saying that like things on Earth have properties like be via the stars, like God is kind of shining through the stars and like when God decides that something should get hot or something should conduct heat or something, that has to filter through specific stars which then shine upon the earth and then impart those qualities upon the things that they touch does that make sense yeah yeah like in, like an orrery or like a like a yeah light yeah refraction. um oh. it's literally literally by light refraction like he he conceptualizes starlight as a kind of special type of air and fire it's like he's marionetting us through lasers yeah oh. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, like like he's he's controlling us with 5G radiation from the stars. <laughs> Pretty cool. Woman Pretty moment. cool. Uh, so, Pretty I think cool. As, someone asked earlier, what's the, what in your opinion is the funniest heresy? Oh, oh. Okay. Is a the funniest heresy. Hmm. The funniest and the coolest is K-Knights to me. Why, why? What? Because they're just like, yes, Kane was actually good for doing murder. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty based. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really like um, this. I really like the the Simon Magus people, like the the early proto Gnostics, because it was just oh. like, you know, you had the the Catholic Church still hadn't really like figured out of... what being Catholic was. And uh -huh. so there were a lot of people that were like, hey, what if God is like male and female at the same time? And what if women can be preachers? And that's fine. That's and, the sick. and the church was like, hey, stop challenging our political economy. <laughs> and then a, dope. I think it's cool that there's a town called Valentine when we're talking about heresies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that is pretty Melanchinus. cool. Um, uh, and the, yeah. the, the Valentinian Gnostics fuck. The, they honestly, do. They're, they're so Ooh, dope. Good question. I wish uh, more Gnostic like, uh, cosmology just survived. The yeah. Air, like no. between the different ones and like Valentinians, but like we only really have Valentinians and their aeons and all that. Like, but we've got like we've got like Valentinians and the, like Sethians. Yeah. Okay. Good yeah, question. Chat. Distortion asks: uh, Do wizards name things dramatically on purpose, or is it our perception mm. of what is a dramatic source? That's a. Very good question, actually. Yes, go go ahead. Yes, dramatically on purpose. When people ask me what magic is, I, uh, I've i taken to saying magic is meditation with theatrics. Like, it's it's yes. deliberately theatrical, and, like, um, like that that kind of effect is, is what you want in ritual. It's, like, it's what will, like, get your head into that space and be able to, like, yeah, make yeah. you have fucking visions about demons or angels or whatever the fuck you know like yeah you need the theater to uh get into that specific kind of like trance like it's not um uh go ahead and say what you were gonna say i, I kind of well yeah yeah it's like i i've been maintaining for a while now that like at any time magic is at least 50 percent theatrics like if not more yeah um but knowing exactly how to tweak those theatrics in just the right way to achieve the f the effect that you are going for in just the right way in a way that like doesn't make you insane like that's where all the skill in magic comes from it's not like you could see, you could call it special lying in the same way that like physics is special math i guess mhm mm mm -hmm. question um why would why do you guys think that dramatics play such an important role in the occult? Hmm, good question. Um, I, I that's like hmm. asking why water plays such an important role in swimming. I don't. <laughs> but it but it's it's a good question to ask. You know. No, no, it why is. Why does it? It's not like like you like you can't like you can't swim in maple syrup no matter how many tr time, times I've tried. Well, I mean, you can. Poorly. Wait, maybe um, you can, Riley. You piece of shit. <laughs> no, they threw it on Mythbusters. <laughs> they did that do that. True. Yeah, that I is for, true. Yeah, forgot about that. Gosh. I, um, mm. <sighs> Hang on. I, I I don't want to move on quite yet. I kind of want to. I kind of want to at least well, give. I want to think about yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. That, that's still a thinking good ass this. question, Bean. Thank you. I've never done this before. Um. Gosh. I. It's like it's it's the technique. Like it's. I, it what, like I, I, gets you like like you can use, I mean you you could use you know whatever else like drugs or um, uh, like whatnot to take you to a like a certain kind of space. But like, 
magic um, you're not going to be as clear-headed as as you would be with like the 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 sort of like theatrical trance like method of um mm -hmm. like ceremonial okay work. okay uh like theatrical work um power like the the relationship between power and good stories is mm. far more closely knit like just psychologically than i think a lot of people understand like people don't necessarily believe things because it's correct they believe things because it's mm -hmm. a good story you ever and had th a parent that's... tell you like a bedtime story as a kid and then you you could like see it in your mind and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah like hey, you know boy. you were there yeah. it's that's... like even exactly even in a broader sense though it's like the manipulation of power requires an aesthetic element like things yeah things may be important because they are important but they like they they spread they hold power they hold people's attention because they feel important too and knowing that very specific relationship between like what makes a story important and powerful and yeah. like touching and what makes it feel that way is a central element of magic i would say to add an example for that would you say like draw the comparison to like how uh, people would talk about how uh, what's his face um caesar was a pyro pyrokinesis yeah yeah similar i i i think that's a good example of how like like the, the the sort of symbol of caesar like C caesar as an idea in people's heads mm -hmm. is already one of these kind of fountains of like fountains of social and political power and so it just kind of leaks stories and mythology out of it well i the other day i made a post that was like the state is theater to yeah some extent. yeah like they use like magical techniques to kind of like create pomp and circumstance and make you like really believe like this is a thing like you it know is what I mean? yeah yeah because like there, um, there was no, there was nothing okay. special about the uh, about people in state power necessarily like we've kind of figured this out a little while ago but, right, but if right. you see a bunch of like, you know, we have, uh, we have all collectively like, decided uh, that well yeah. tailored uniforms and like shiny uh, badges and uh, you know state birds insignia on things. Like you start to really like, you're like, oh, this is like a thing, you know. We have right, all you collectively up... decided that these trappings are something that have power, despite there not being any rational reason why having a cool bird on your suit means you get to decide how like you get yeah. to dictate the fate of people's lives <laughs> one yeah. one could call it a regime of signs if you would perhaps oh one my god yeah i know we're gonna start getting into semiotics now oh my semiotics god i was waiting i was fucking waiting for this let's <laughs> drop that down first of all i was fucking waiting for us to get into semiotics. magic okay oh i also uh um I, i've you know uh th there's another there's another definition of magic um that i've heard go around i don't know if i said this or someone else said this but magic is where semiotics meets orgasm Ooh, <laughs> good ass goes, quote. that kind of goes hard actually i love that that sounds like batai um <laughs> i don't know i it's a good ass quote I'll, I'll try also, and track really, that one down. Really quick, someone asked me, like, what do they mean when I'm referring to Babylon as an entity instead of a location? Babylon is a Thelemic goddess. Um, yeah. And mm. uh, if you want to understand that, then... Babylon with an A instead of a Y. Babylon. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, like, research <laughs> her or whatever. There's lots of books about her. Uh, the Red Goddess, Eloquent Blood... Just, um, okay, like rule of thumb, if if Riley says something like a term that you recognize, but is clearly using it in a way that you don't understand, it's probably from the Lama. There, that's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> good baseline. And when Let's we have take... a um, when we've reached towards the end of this, I saw a really good question in chat from May. Uh, hit it now, hit it now. Is there a reason that the bodies of practitioners are said to develop mystical properties of its own, i.e. witches spit or shkulki encouraging, encouraging the uses of saint bones? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if that's necessarily, like, exclusively a magical thing. I think just, like, when people are special and cool, the idea of, like, a part of their body containing a piece of that specialness is just kind of how a lot of people think about the world yeah like that's, I that's Catholicism. it's a big yeah, part of Catholicism. it is a definitely yeah, yeah, a big it part of Catholicism, Catholicism. but like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Perpetuated oh, 
Stigmata. We just got a really big question. Oh, just a Jesus. Really big one. Okay, read it out for us, Bean. <laughs> um, I have a question for the courts. Was going to say court magi, but then I remembered Bean and Celia are both here, so pun. This is especially to CT, but while I'm on the opposite side of the coin, or maybe the edge, with Galatians 2, strict empiricist versus more spiritualist. Sorry for the ramble, just getting out of the way, but to my mind, I feel like I agree with CT in that the narrative slash the new sphere is an emergent, emergent property of humanity. Like, I doubt there's a tangible mental plane a la Sanderson or 40K, but like humans think in narrative, and as a result, fireball IRL is impossible without sci-fi bullshit. Nonetheless, human consensus of reality is its own layer of reality, even if intangible slash material. I... And then, or TLDR, what's y'all's verdict as narrative as a tangible thing? Uh, I'm, I'm a very strict empiricist. <laughs> um, I say that it's fun to believe differently, even if it's not true. Here's I agree. Here's 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 what I here's what I here's what I like it, it helps you get into the work better. Here's yeah. what I, here's, here's like, what I like, said on so like, If you're able to compartmentalize like what you actually think like empirically, rationally, and um, look, you know. Uh, okay, really Riley. Riley, disbelief in play. Yeah. Right. Would you describe Would you describe that relationship to like Im empirical versus spiritual reality as a secret third thing? <laughs> yes. 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 Here's that is the position I would take then. Like here's, I, here's I, the... I will consider myself a strict empiricist, but for magic, like if you're when you're in the ritual chamber and you're doing the ritual shit, you're not. You are neither an empiricist nor a spiritualist. You are a secret third thing. Here's the if way I'm doing I... Christian magic in that moment, I'm a Christian. But if somebody asks, "Are you a Christian?" It's like, See, yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Here's, exactly. Here's the, here's the way I put it on the Skyrim stream. When mm -hmm. Ulfric Stormcloak goes, "Legends don't burn down villages," I, I was like, "Ah, you clearly haven't heard of the protocols of the Elders of Zion." Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also it's like, buddy, it sure did it, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> If narrative is a fully tangible thing, I feel like that makes it a little less special. Um, like I feel like it, I feel like it loses mm. a certain level of that like shine and sparkle mm. if you mm. recognize it as like a concrete fact. As a person reality. who holds Finnegan's Wake as a holy book, I think the universe <laughs> itself is made of language, and uh, like on an ontological level, uh, like smaller than subatomic particles. When you look down, you see little tiny letters. Um, yeah, and uh, th that's the logos. That's the that's the word animating the entire force of the universe, and that's uh, fun to believe it if you're doing magic. Uh, it uh, is. Uh, Dorothy said earlier, really semiotics is a metaphysical toolkit that you can use to analyze the world. It is. Everything Dorothy I have is a hammer that I can use to bash more and more nails. Yeah. Dor Dorothy said earlier, CT, not everything is a secret third thing. Look, that's all the occult is, though, Dorothy. <laughs> you forget. Not all the occult is. It's just most of hermeticism. You're just okay. collecting <laughs> all the secret third things. Yeah. And, and then you're mashing, a... you're making them fuck to produce more secret third things. <laughs> Ma'am, you logged on to the secret third thing stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the secret third thing stream, ma'am. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. We serve secret third things here. Uh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, no. the The word is tangible. It's actually the only tangible thing. And, all right, we have to uh, we have all... to get off of we have to get off of Finnegan's Wake. Let's get a new question up, up no! in here. Yeah. Sorry, Riley. Of wake. <laughs> uh, Bean, can you find us a new question? Um, yeah, I'm currently looking at chat right now. Now that you said it for fully, I'm sure someone will scroll in. I'll let you know when one pops up. Oh, yeah, Tell got one. What is your okay. fa f favorite theory about what happens to excess energy thrown out while doing magic? Oh. Uh, if you're a fucking good wizard, it stays in, in the circle. <laughs> well, um, well, well, well for, for the bad wizards, for the cringe fail wizards in chat, CT, could you answer, the, answer this? Uh, I, I like... About expenditure and Bataille's notion of expenditure <laughs> in relation to this question. Uh, we're, I mean, we're talking like golden bow metaphysics here, so let's let's play around in the space a little bit. I like to think that it kind of radiates off you like pure chaos and starts fucking up people's dice rolls. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I... it's like functionally equivalent to that. It's like whatever force causes people to roll nat ones. Dion, Dion's <laughs> saying, what's your favorite theory? Not the one that you personally believe. That is my favorite theory. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, th those two might be one of the same. 
bestie. I've got to say, my favorite theory personally is the idea of that's where Ultra has come from. Like, it's it's the magic that you didn't actively channel towards a direction. That that's where what comes you. from? And there's the a, there's from. a mm. quote from Uncle Al uh, that's like, you know, you're doing magic at all points of uh, the day, like throughout your entire life. And the point of being a magician is to learn how to do it well, because you're like you're always giving off like energy, expending it in areas that should be like you, yeah. you know learning. Uh, magic is learning how to like direct things and um, uh, really like take charge of that and learn how to like yeah. live with that like consciously. You know, one of um, the uh, one of the biggest Crowley things that I grumble grumble agree with. Yeah. All um, right. May is may is an interesting question. Is there an occult topic that you feel is academically underexplored? Um, I mm. Kenneth Grant. <laughs> just, gonna, just the man, Kenneth Grant. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say fucking um, like like pseudo medicine and pseudoscience as analyzed, mm. like analyzed as like folk spiritual out folk spirituality like oh like like fire cider i mean i mean literally like 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 uh celery juice as a potion just treating it yeah through that lens like anthropologically because i think it once you start looking at a lot of like pseudo medical grifters just as magicians they make a lot more sense and what mm. frustrates me about this is that a lot of them are straight up magicians. The celery juice guy, like the guy that I just mentioned, the reason that he tells people to drink celery juice, like, and this guy was like on Oprah at one point. Of course the he reason, fucking was on Oprah. <laughs> yeah, no, the reason that he tells people to drink celery juice is that a ghost from the future told him to. Yeah. 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 And like, it's if, all... look, if a ghost from the future told me to do anything, I would believe it. No, well, li like literally, really same. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I fucking really uh, that's like that's like though. fucking John of God's whole thing. It's he channeled these dead doctors to Is manifestation like, a type of magic? Yes, explicitly. Th that's yeah. literally just yeah. Yeah. You know, like no question. Um I'm trying to think. Was, there was another good question that I that was earlier. Um let's see, let's see, let's see. It was um is there a cool intersection of physics and magic with the idea of potential energy as a thing? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You could say that. There's uh, there's a uh, lot think... of, um, especially after chaos magic, where they really got into like the whole math and magic thing uh, in yeah. the '90s with the chaos magic. Uh, like they oh they, 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 there's people who took it in like a really like, physics direction. And then there's also people who took it in like a programming direction. So like magic is like using like programming language, like syntax and stuff. Mm. Um, what's your uh, take and... on all that? What? Like the what's your take on all like using programming language syntax as like an occult framework? It's a bit dead for me. Like it, yeah. it, like if it works for other people, like that's really cool. I wish it would work for me. But like I have mm. to like for me the magic is more like a like a narrative like animate thing that like yeah, i have to like yeah. um i have to like like kind of negotiate with and like coax out like i can't i can't just treat it like a math problem it, it's weird yeah i think it can make a good skeleton if you put some meat on it yeah no that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Like, it, that's it, a really it good point good yeah um th th that's what my like problem with a lot of chaos magic is it's like it's like skeleton, really cool skeleton. Oh, I love this fucking skeleton, but there's there's no meat, which is why like like I cut my teeth on chaos magic. I started out as a chaos magician. I think that's then, like like I wanted yeah. something with meat. Thalema had meat. Um, mm -hmm. It has it's very meaty actually. Thalema uh, is maybe the meatiest that you can get. I would describe yeah. Thalema as a stew, <laughs> a gumbo <laughs> of magic. <laughs> One of the, the past yeah. says, uh, who was that saint who was just a normal guy who had a ton of hallucinations and then was posthumously sainted? All um, of them. That, that sounds like a lot of them. Yeah, that could be like like <laughs> 10 different guys. Yeah, no. Let's see. Um, I noticed that numbers quite, pop up like, off quite often in occultism. Is there any theology that goes against the grain and specifically hates math? Ooh. <laughs> uh, um, Pol Pot. Um, Pol Pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I chaos magician pull pot. <laughs> Sorry, I brought up war crimes again. Sorry. Oops. It's not the exact thing, but like, I'm, 
In old Irish myth, if you wrote stuff down, like, on paper, or in stone, it lost a lot of its magic. That's why there was such a heavy emphasis on oh, remembering huh. the stories. Yeah. Um, which isn't the exact same, but it's adjacent. Uh, they didn't I like love how they would use the land as a mnemonic device, and it was very much, like, about yeah. the kind of, like the like process of speaking the word and passing it down yeah well because that's each really cool they would, they would use the land and the stars um, to like tell the stories at like the different times of year that they were relevant um and uh, the, the old irish shit is really cool as like much of it as we like have available to us and like are able to piece together like uh it doesn't seem like they were doing a lot of math there um no we could be wrong <laughs> But like, the even, even my like revivalist know. stuff doesn't involve much math. Like it's it's like Druidic revivalism is like no math in it. Uh, yeah, it's mostly. Yeah, but also, like then there's then there's the then there's the people who are like, I'm a Golden Dawn Druid, and <laughs> those people are cool. But also, they're doing a lot of math because the Golden Dawn stuff involves a lot of math. like like I say that I'm yeah. like I, 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 you know how I just said I need more like meat or like animated yeah. for this but like a lot of my practice is kind of mathy because it's from a golden dawn yeah. like system yeah yeah um, hmm. and Notori it's like even yeah go ahead go ahead uh notoriums asks are there any interesting occultism specific mnemonic techniques oh god um mind palace is i honestly think very occult um the, the, like building yeah. like canceled temples and then um uh, literally, uh, like all of tarot is an occultism specific mnemonic technique that you lay out along the tree. Like, like all of the golden dawn is is just one big fucking mnemonic technique. And then once you're able to like hold the whole mnemonic in your head, that's when you get to play around with it and move things and like, yes, poke them and push them and uh, you know, set them on fire or whatever else you're doing. Um like what once you've like so like the people are like oh there's so much memorization i don't like that but once you've memorized it you can be bop it scat it like fucking like yeah you, you can know, jazz like, with it improv, it's, yeah it, it, that's what's that's what's really cool about the golden dawn like thalema stuff to me is huh. um like it's once, why i tell people uh, like the first thing that if you really want to learn tarot memorize it like like just use it like flashcards like completely memorize yeah, it, it drives me and so crazy. then the, like the like intuitive reading trend like right I, I, as, as much as it like lets people in i think you should memorize oh. the cards because no. you you've got to be able to speak the language you've got to be able to speak i, I think i think people should oh oh is it ad time no it's a uh, raid time sorry give me keep oh. talking keep talking ice cream. i'm gonna get some calls. okay okay no no i i feel like people should i i feel like people should at least memorize the raider weight and then once they've done that, then you should start playing around with the with the, the intuitive reading stuff. Or it's like use the intuitive reading stuff as like an in to get into cardomancy. And then it's like, okay, if you really want to level this shit up, memorize the Raider weight and then go back to the uh, the intuitive reading shit. Well, and I'm, because I'm, once you memorize the Raider weight, also it helps to know the like. It, 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 we we can have a conversation about like the cultural appropriation or whatever, but like. It, it, the, the 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 like golden dawn like kabbalah of the raider weight um right. like knowing that no like lets you figure out like how the cards are like structured and laid out and it's like oh one through ten it's one of the ten spheres on the the, the tree oh the cards of the major arcana oh. uh take you between the spheres they're the they're the active moving paths um, right right like that that shit uh uh, and and you know then then like the, the 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 court cards are a reflection of the four worlds as they relate to each other like you know um, right right uh, and it's like once okay I, I feel like I, I feel like you should figure out how all that works like okay if you're gonna fuck around with tarot you should understand like what it was designed to do you should learn you should learn the words and whatever and then like like understand the kabbalistic principles that it was designed with and then like once you have an understanding of like the ideas that you're playing around with then you can start like like uh, I, I feel like it. yeah you can you can like unfuck it that's when you start to like and i think that's where a lot of like modern occultism is going is they're like uh, maybe we should your practice. Yeah, it's like maybe we shouldn't base our entire like magical religious system on like this very specific practice from Judaism and like yeah. something that is even very sacred to Judaism. 
Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it is... Kabbalah is well, undeniably compelling and they, a very interesting set of ideas. The but... Golden Dawn, they, like, teach you that as, like, scaffolding to get you up to Enochian. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's, like, that's kind of the, like, which, the end goal, but, like, it's initially very hard to, like, understand which, it without, like, the language. And mm-hmm. they're just like, oh, well, here's a language that we can use and it's like well yeah it's not yeah, 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 which, yeah, uh, which brings yeah. which uh, it's actually like that's a very good uh, i'm sorry that's a very good segue into a different question someone asked are there any mystic practices that use constructed languages or uh just where the practice involves a construct <laughs> in a language yes <laughs> quite a few let me, introduce, <laughs> let me introduce you to a man named mr john d one of the uh, <laughs> most influential <laughs> wizards to ever live okay yeah Thank john d <laughs> I need you to understand something about John D. John D is a man in Victorian England who basically just made matrixes and like smoked pot or whatever and was like, Edward Kelly, I need you to let me fuck your wife so the secret book of Enoch's in ah, text. Okay, text okay. And Edward me. Kelly was the guy who was like, John D, I need you to let me fuck your wife. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, oh. No, because the fun, like, everyone is like, oh man, John D was such a womanizer, but no, it's like, uh, Edward, it's like John D's wife was like super into it, and, and what the fuck? John D wasn't. I, I, yeah, I, it's just the funniest every, part of all of that. The every, angels are like, you have to wife swap uh, in order to like, like break down your like inhibitions and stuff and they're like i guess if god says like that's what we have to do Dude. and like <laughs> what like d hated that like yeah he, okay. he, he was, like, was like but like ellie was like yeah baby like no, if you read if you read the diaries like d's like are you sure man <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> but they're both in like they're both in like ritual mode where they're like you know they're where they're willing to quote unquote ever. channeling the angels and everything. So they're in like everything that we say is very important and being recorded and we're speaking this magically constructed language. So everything that is happening here is very serious. So if you bring up the concept of wife swapping for the angels, you gotta <laughs> commit to that shit. Like, yeah, baby. Like, you know, yeah, no, these are but people who like, fuck your went wife. To, like <laughs> went to like the like emperor of the Holy Roman Empire uh for the angels like like and asked him like to like you know um fall, like, like 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 basically they they went at like great expense to themselves and did like a slideshow for the holy roman emperor and he was like fuck off like um <laughs> can i share my favorite tidbit about enochian lore please yeah. please please so please there, yeah. this is actually where i started studying fun fact really <laughs> Yeah, That's my wild. first ever occult text was a book called Beginner's Guide to Enochian. Oh, oh my god. Hello. Very interesting. Um, I would not have expected that. Was that Aaron Lee? or something? I don't remember off the top of my head. I have it downstairs. I can get the author later. But my favorite tidbit is that, so their core angel, more or less, was Nalvange. And Nalvange was kind of their, like, main conduit. From mm-hmm. for angelic wisdom, and it they write that nothing would only appear in ritual space other than one time where Edward Kelly was fucking John D's wife, and Edward <laughs> Ke- Kelly, while balls deep in his wife, was like, "Now they told me to do it." <laughs> and that's... the only recorded I did not time know that. That's, that's fucking great. incredible. <laughs> Holy Outside shit! Of ritual space, the only recorded time. That's fucking amazing. I, I... I guess he found a new ritual space. Yeah, Edward Kelly's wife. <laughs> there's a, there's a whole world of Enochian sex magic out there. Um, thanks to the, uh, Uncle Al and Vicky Berg. Oh yeah. Um, gay Enochian sex magic. Very very gay Enochian sex magic. All right, uh, Bean, find us a question. I got it. I got a question. I I I wait. Uh, what was there was. There was one earlier. Um, Voleth95 asked, is it possible to construct a digital, a, a ritual space in a digital space? Yes. Yeah, very, very easily, mm-hmm. actually. You, um, can, you, you can make that, a ritual I was space just, in Minecraft. The other day, sharing a, a video with CT, uh, this, this like 13-year-old, 14-year-old video of this guy who's a Typhonian Thelemite, you know, one of the people who believes in ancient egyptian alien mm-hmm. uh lovecraftian uh you know you know, um, you know. Uh, you know. he 
he does these like slideshow presentations over top of like second life footage uh, <laughs> oh my where God. he's built a perfect golden dawn temple and he's wearing like the, the golden dawn like accoutrement oh. and it's like um he's done the work he it's a very like he wow. understands what is important to recreate and like yeah. he knows why it's important and why it should be there like he he there's also it demonstrates like he's got the theatrics right you know like he there's understands what VR, there's a vr game uh that you can download that'll take you through the neophyte initiation of the golden dawn in vr um, that's really you know, cool they build the temple and they've got you in your around. like spot like it's weird it's That's so one cool. way to get around how like prohibitively expensive it is to get into certain faiths accurately. Because mm -hmm. like going back to Enochian, you need like I'm pretty sure a table top made of solid gold, according to the book. Like he, I they, want an Enochian <laughs> table so bad. That sounds pretty <laughs> sick. Yeah. I, yeah, no, that's like one of my life goals. The, the, like all the people that I know are like, yeah, I've made mine out of paper or out of like brass or whatever it is. It's uh, got to be like a table, you know, like <laughs> um, I, it's one of these. Point, yeah, at some point in my life, I will blow a hell of a lot of money on a fucking gold. It's beyond a hell of a lot because you'll probably listen, have to get it. Like, up listen, <laughs> one of my one of my roommates is currently studying to be a blacksmith and so so part of like they've wanted to be they've wanted to get into blacksmithing forever it's been like a lifelong dream of them and a couple of years ago i um while they were like in between jobs and feeling really depressed i i helped them i basically paid for the entire like first two or three months of classes for them on oh the God, condition yeah. on the condition that once they were skilled enough they would make me a sword yeah yeah that's so, right baby <laughs> And and as they have been learning, they've been telling me about like the things that they can that they can do to the sword. And so we have been slowly over time designing a custom like magical athema that will be a oh. a full handmade sword. That's fucking I, I sick. Have to, see, I, have, I, have, I have a magical right knife plan made. Oh, Ooh, I have a magical okay. knife plan made too, off of a railroad spike. That's what they're often made of, actually. That's like yeah. what they practice on in the blacksmith shop. I have a 1900s cast iron railroad spike that I dig dug out of the ground that I'm that eventually is going to be a knife. The I in my dreams, the sword would have like every planet, a little like orb of every planetary metal cast in resin inside oh. of it. But I think it would be kind of dangerous to have like mercury suspending mercury. resin inside That's, of a sword. That seems a little intense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're making a very effective sword. It in, if you didn't suspend it in resin, if you suspended it in something that's like more durable. Okay, someone says, "Look at what Valeth said." Oh, uh, it's pinned. One second, let me fucking expand it. I wonder uh, if making an Enochian table out of solid gold by assigning it a gold material in VR would work. Hmm. Huh. I mean, probably. I, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, following the logic that a digital space can be a work functional working space, then yes. Right, right. But I also I don't know what I don't know what the what D's the reasoning for the, the the table being gold is. Like I don't like I, I don't know see, if that can I be fudged or not. You to make it yourself. Like I <laughs> genuinely I think um, I think you I might like be to carve in your, yourself about Enochian like practice. Um, they're like, you know, the angels don't really care whether it's paper or gold. They care that you've done it and, like, put work into it and that you have it. Um, right, right. And also, mm -hmm. like, that you kind of hold it sacred and, like, to some extent, like, believe that it's gold, you know? Right, like, right. Like, you... um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, it's less about, it's just has to have the same significance, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah. But... You know, I, I want fucking gold. Yeah, it'd be cool I, if it was gold. You know the you know the the, the leprechaun in Alabama news story. No, uh, no. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. The, 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 the fucking that, leprechaun with the, with no, the leprechaun. I know about this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. There's, it's there's really a, a good. That, um, where someone's saying, "I want to know where the gold at. I want the gold," and I that lives <laughs> in my brain. Um, I, I love. Sure. I fucking love that video. Please, like, oh find gosh. it and put it put it in life vlog so these people can see it. 
very important interjection. Cactus Brandy, I'm very curious. Is there any digital occultism stuff happening in the crypto slash NFT space? Yes, and it's that's, uh, that's all yeah, the fuck that's God. all fucking speculation and stock trading is though. Okay. Because like, no, we're talking like, like formal like occultism here. Expressly like occult <laughs> NFTs that are people are making that are like yeah, yeah like they're doing art. Like they're, oh, they're doing magical damn. art, which is like a long, like standing thing, and then they're making it an NFT, and saying, you know, like if you own this fucking like NFT sigil, you know, you'll you'll receive the like benefits of it. Like it's yeah, yeah. Get, your bag, get your bag. It's, but, fucky. it's but, fucky and gross. Yeah. I'm going to say something here briefly. Mm -hmm. I fun fact chat. I have a very personal intertwining with uh, NFT stuff because my there's a period in my life where I was working under someone who was trying to convert me to Catholicism. Well, not Catholicism, but like <laughs> off-brand Christianity with NFT as like core esoteric, like religious part of it. With like NFTs and cryptocurrency having a religious level of importance. <laughs> that is fascinating. That's wild. I've heard and... like fragments of this story before. <laughs> I've heard none this of this. I've heard nothing about this. It's it's hard for me to find even where I start. Basically, he was like, um, who was what was the libertarian? He believed that the government was always very, very, very bad, and that NFTs wasn't a method through which God slash Jesus was giving us the ability to throw off the shackles of the corrupt government. I see. Huh. There's a little little bit of a little bit of Nick Land in there. Hmm. And God, like I hate him so much. <laughs> I just in relation to the question of uh, esotericism related NFTs, that's just the first thing that comes to mind. No, he was an awful person. Nothing he was doing was good. Yeah, or... I, I, this I, guy I, doesn't I, sound cool. No, I, I would not like this guy if I met him. <laughs> he was genuinely the only, the first person I've met in my life where I was like, wow, he has all of the personality traits of what it would take to make a fantastic cult leader. And Ooh. like, and that's why I left. Yeah, sounds that, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, good, good fucking call. I know, like, I know some. Of, I just, I've met some of those guys where I'm like, you're like, you just need to like find the right people who like believe your bullshit. But I've never met anyone yeah. like that. Dude. Yeah. Well, like, oh, he had man. found them. Like, it, it, he probably has like, a that barbershop now. Genuinely. Right. Yeah. Right. Because he would yeah. talk about how the barbershop was like a ministry. You know, that's our whole thing. We preach to you while we cut your hair. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. So it attracted this very specific type of like beaten down men, yeah. Who like felt you know <laughs> that's almost definitely a cult now. Ooh, no, no, he was, like, I, that sounds like it's already a cult. <laughs> De Dev is um, a may, may is a very good question. I want I want to I wanna go off the scary cult guy thread. Um, yeah, yeah. This, this might be a be, this might be personal, but do any of you plan to have grave goods in some way? Just wondering, since we know so much about past beliefs from them. Great. That's a really. Okay, I've been, oh, like, like being buried with us. Yeah, like, like things that things you're buried with, with, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I've never thought about that. I want. I, I want to be torn apart by birds and have my femurs turn into trumpets, and my skull uses a bull what? for ritual yeah. purposes. I want to be want, uh, cremated and planted under a tree. Hmm. I want whatever happens to my body to be. I want my body to be turned into like things that I are want, used. I want my uh, I want my crew to smoke my ashes like fucking Tupac. <laughs> I want. Them, I want it. <laughs> Say that. I want them to take the charcoal from my body and turn it into an ink and to get woe tattooing with it. That's what I want. That's pretty. Ooh, that sounds pretty sick. Ooh, that is kind of dope, actually. That's pretty. That's pretty sick. Dorothy will be buried uh, with Capital. Hmm. That's yeah. That's yeah that makes sense. That's fair. I, I, I believe that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I would I would want people within my practice to have certain bones of mine. I'd want um, that'd I'd be want pretty to, cool. Yeah. Re, like real, real answer. I'd want to be buried with one of my instruments. I don't know which, but yeah, my, they're they're very important to me. I don't know. Well, I like the plant. idea of being a plant. I, I yeah. I'd like to have a little sacred grove. Yeah, to to turn turn back, uh, have your life uh, go back into the world in some way. Yeah, I want to be part of the process again. There's, yeah. there's a cult locally that like fought to have mummifications made legal again, and it, it mummifies people. 
Uh, and no. they also have a pyramid, and they believe in aliens. Um, and also believe that ancient Egyptians used this like uh, weird sex cream. Uh, yeah. Right with the mummy's fucking curse is spreading. Oh no! God damn it! <laughs> I it forgot again. to tell you that we got a mummy cult in in, in town. God damn yeah. it! <laughs> I think you like tangentially brought this up once, like in the DMs, and then never mentioned it again. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're called Sumum. They're called Sumum, like Sumum Bonum. Uh, one of their websites, the one about the sex cream that they think the ancient Egyptians used, is called sexualecstasy.org. Um, <laughs> that's I, that's they have really that one. TGI videos. That are, like, Log on to sex.com to be cursed by Nefertiti. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I want to, I want to like join them, but I also feel like th they don't have good vibes. Like it's, it's yeah. a cult. Uh, it sounds stinky. That has a mausoleum with mummies in it and a pyramid where they host live streams. Um, and I, I, I don't think that that kind of organization is usually cool about trans people. No, um, I, I don't think no. they're very woke. Um, to go back to something street. much, much earlier. For the people in chat who, like, let's say, don't have much knowledge at all, cats. We started, but then we immediately switched topics. I'm gonna bring us back there briefly. Oh. Meaning of paths in this context. Oh, yes. Um... Uh, sorry, wait, I'm sorry, meaning of what? Paths. Oh, yeah, let's... I, 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 wanna, I wanna know about this. Yeah, um... Basically just, like, if the goal... If the goal is the work, the... The distance between point A and point B is the path, right? There are many mm -hmm. paths. Or it's one path, but it's crooked, depending on, like, whatever thing that you... Or it's both, or neither, or whatever. You said yeah. right-hand path earlier. Uh, what did that oh, mean? Oh, yeah, no, right-hand path. Um, that's, like... You define it, CT, because I want to know what you think right-hand path is. Uh, okay, okay, so the way that this has been explained to me before, I, I don't, like, people say these terms a lot, and they kind of mean the same thing, and it's definitely going to be helpful to clarify what each of us sure. mean by this. Yeah. So the right-hand path is, the right-hand path is more about, like, it, it's sort of one of the big, uh, like, branches of thought in, in occult theory. And the, the right-hand path is more about, like, study. It's about, you know, kind of keeping the actual practice of magic at an arm's length and keeping... Uh, interacting with it in a much more studious way where, like, yeah. you kind of only think that certain people should be allowed to practice magic. Mm -hmm. um, and then the left-hand path is the one with all of the, the crazy rituals and the... Like, that's where you kind of really get into the nitty-gritty and you kind of experiment yourself and talk to angels and all that jazz. Ah, in, okay. in my experience, in my experience, right-hand path usually means I work with, like, light forces and I don't dabble in dark stuff. And left-hand path means I dabble in dark stuff. But uh, then, like, there's other people who are like, right-hand path is like... God, how do I... It's it's the uh, it's the it's the virgin and Chad paths. Um, <laughs> left hand path is reach heaven through violence. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's more like individualistic. Um, and right hand I, path I, is like, read, like, to, to me. To book. me, like the, the, those terms haven't been connected to the amount of study you do. Like I know people who consider themselves left hand path that um, would, so, you know. Run like circles around a lot of work. people who consider themselves like, exactly, right exactly. Path, like study-wise, um, it's um, it's one of these terms that's kind of stopped it's meaning like, it's what it's I think they were supposed loaded to mean. Is what it is. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I found it to be like not a really useful like dichotomy, um, because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's, and, and like, like you know, it's like it's like one of those things. Like, what is black magic and what is white magic? And it's like, uh, yeah, it is a, um, it's a very Catholic like, way of looking at things. Like a thelemite, like um, a black magician is someone who does magic aimed at other people that isn't 
own, like like magic is is a thing that you only do to yourself really unless someone asks you like it is, like someone who like works magic on somebody without their like right right basically. good or bad like you're not supposed to interfere with somebody else's like whereas right. like a rosicrucian um, would or... consider a black magician like somebody that does magic with demons like yeah it's yeah it's I'm gonna... morally loaded is a good way of talking about those terms i'm gonna say for the purposes of chat most of the times people will have their own meanings for those two terms in particular because of how far they've strayed that's kind of why i asked just for you guys you know yeah. make sure most of the time, if someone's saying that, their meaning is completely different from every other person who is saying it. <laughs> hmm. It is kind of a nothing term at this point. It's blunt. Uh, well, and then then there's like people who consider themselves middle path. Like Th Thelemites would consider themselves uh, typically like a path of balance, um, and which is and like the, kind of the rest of the occult world looks at Thelemites and goes like, eh, "You're left hand path." Like yeah, there's yeah. who give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it, one of these it, kind of like all of you are unbalanced, and then like they're like you're the <laughs> freak. It's like you're the you're the sex magic dickhead people. Like you're, <laughs> the, you're the every you're like the every man and every woman is a star thing, and then Thelemites <laughs> get to point at Satanists and go like, no, -uh, look at these dickheads. <laughs> oh boy, Satanists. I I don't want to speak ill of the devil. Um, <laughs> Understandable, but um, also. <laughs> I earlier, earlier God question damn. from Mecha Noise. Um, I might have missed the answer already, but have any of y'all been in a position to recommend a specific religion and or practice in a similar manner as Inns does sketches, if that makes sense? Secondarily, did it go well? Um... So to reword that slightly, I think they're asking, like, have we ever, has anyone ever been like, give me direction, you gave them direction, how'd it work, how'd it turn out? I, I really do not like recommending a particular thing to people. I'll, I will point people towards individual ideas if I think that it would, if I think it's what they're looking for, but I'm not necessarily going to be like, you should be a Typhonian or like, yeah. you should look into the Rosicrucians or whatever. You're, people ask you're, not, me, you're not a practice do do? dealer, you know? Yeah. People will ask me, what do I do? And I always, I always point them to, um, you the the very first thing that you do in like golden dawn or salima which is the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram um I, that's a that good has point it all it has it all there and <laughs> right like, once you like start like once you've got the thing memorized uh like mnemonically or whatever mm -hmm. then you're able to like incorporate like really putting your pussy into it like you know yeah you, yeah you get your whole breath and your, all of your consciousness, like, focused on that, and, like, you're able to, like, you know... It's got the visions, usually... it's got the tantra, it's got the... Yeah. It's got the imagining shit, it's got the visions, like... And I guess... Yeah, you, you're moving energy throughout your body, and then um, you're, you're situating yourself in a ritual space, you're envisioning a ritual space, you're envisioning uh, ritual elements, and um, you're uh, uh, familiarizing yourself with the four directions and uh, you're invoking angels and using god names and assuming god forms. Like it's got- You know what else is assuming god forms? Is it the products and services <laughs> that support this stream? That's right, it's better help. <laughs> <laughs> better help us become one with the godhead. Yeah, it's- <laughs> Can you imagine- Can you imagine <laughs> signing up for better help and they're like- and they're like- so, so what we need to start with is the lesser <laughs> finishing ritual of the pentagram. Sorry, sorry, oh JB rated like the moment I said that. Hi guys. Oh my god. Uh, um, sorry, to cut you off. Sorry to cut you off, Riley. Uh, oh, can I just say something that I think is really funny from earlier? Just a real brief while we're on ad time. I think it is unendingly funny that when pressed, three of the people in chat all had plans for I want to make X a cult weapon. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Dude, um, why, like, if you're gonna be a wizard, like, of, you have to make a magic sword at some point. Like, of that, course you do. I, like, it's like required. Yeah, it's the occult single action army. <laughs> the finest hand yeah, ever right. made. The occult I'm, single action army. Fuck off. I'm still did you, what, you, didn't, you didn't see that post? <laughs> Fine. This, is, this is a deep cut, but CT used to talk about a, uh, I now know to be fictional, uh, t foci. That was a rifle. Um, it was like a bolt action rifle. That I, oh, I forget what you would, but you would describe it in such accurate detail. I was like, oh my god, that's so sick. Oh yeah, yeah. It was the uh, the the ruined uh, Mosin Nagat. Yeah, Ooh. and I still think. Oh about my god, it. <laughs> <I still> think <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> um, oh. 
so okay. like to get back to the question like when people ask me like about stuff like for recommendations i recommend them things that i know about within my practice because i assume if if they're asking me me things Ooh, they're interested yeah, in sick. what i'm doing to some extent and right. wants like uh want to know how to achieve effects i've achieved and, and like if if they're not i i usually when people ask me stuff like I'm like, so like what kind, like what, what beliefs do you already like hold about magic? So like, I can like right. give you something that'll like situate you somewhere that you're comfortable like practicing, like, cause I can give you, I can give you like, oh, you're into hermeticism. I can give you X, Y, and Z. Oh, you're like right. more into it's just platonic like, 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 rock and roll. Uh, I can give you temple of psychic youth. Um, right. Right. Uh, you know, like. I can give you chaos magic, like whatever you need. I can like point you to the, like the beginning resources for that. But like, right. When I get a very generic question, I'm just like, you're doing the lesser banishing ritual Instagram and you're learning this front to back. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's like, like I, fuck you. If I, you don't like it, like that's like, if, right, you right. me, if you ask me what, what I think you should be doing, um, it's the LDRP. There. Start there. I like. I generally. I, I think I take a little bit more of a a, a courteous response. I I tend to recommend that people like. I also definitely get people that are way less experienced with magic than I think the people who follow you. Yeah. So I, I get a lot of people that are like, "Hey, I followed you for shit posts, and now I'm interested in magic." It's like, where do I start? And I usually tell people tarot. Right. It's a really good way to just kind of like get a feel for like your personal experience of magic right it's like what is it like for you to fuck around with these cards for a little bit and then i i tell people like hey memorize like memorize the writer weight and then once you've done that you know come back to me if it's something that you find yourself enjoying you know do a little bit of reading learn about the symbology if it's still your cup of tea it's still your cup of tea oh my god what you I'm sorry. I, I I just I just caught a fish. I, I just took a peek. It's a beautiful a quick, salmon. Quick, a, a quick peek yeah. at the game. I caught a fish like fucking this. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this was very How scary. What if a train came by? Anyway, go back to your. Go back to the. Yeah, I, I think I think we're we're good for another question. To go back cool, to cool, an cool. earlier thing. Um, this was something mentioned a decent bit earlier. I apologize. I forget who asked it. Um, I'm also paraphrasing. The importance historically of like weaving slash knitting slash fiber craft installations to the occult. Mm. Oh, um, a friend just put out a uh, a little pamphlet uh, called Occult Needlecraft. Um, oh, that's if cool. If you all are curious about uh, stuff like that, if you can see if you can't drop a link in in chat, we'll, yeah, we'll help support your friend. In chat, uh, drop it in the stream live blog in the Discord too. Yeah, uh, that's for the that that'll, that'll be the that'll be the reading list hub for this uh this stream probably. Yeah, we can enter the wizard's tower and read all read our tomes. I've been name dropping so much and I just haven't linked any of that. No, it's fine. Um, it's like the point of this stream is just to like dick around and chat about yeah, magic. Just chilling. Uh, Nat uh, Natrodium says, are there any magic systems slash frameworks that make the semiotic stuff explicit? Thinking about stuff as symbols and systems of symbols is extremely my jam. Uh, ooh. Um, uh, chaos magic. Yeah, I, I was gonna ooh. say, it's like, that kind of, like, you see that shit, that's the entire, that's like the entirety of Agrippa's second book. Like, it's just him oh, that talking. That too, yeah. Like, it, that's, mm. that shit started in, like, the 1500s. Like, if you're, if you were interested in, like, semiotics as magic, I would... And you want like a a real thorough understanding of it? Start with Agrippa, um, and like there's definitely going to be a lot of like Rosicrucian shit like that. And the uh, the Neo Orphics really dig all that like symbols as magic and like constructing images as magical objects. Um, but it, it Riley's right. It really is the uh, uh, the Chaos Magicians that are doing all the the semiotics as magic shit. Hmm. Hello, hello, chat. Uh Hello, Involuntary Pro. Uh, Jessica says, is there a method for organizing occult research that you would recommend? I, I'm oh, interested in that Lord. also, actually. <laughs> yeah, see, how, um, do you keep all the, how do you keep all this shit straight? Like, how do you organize, um, your, how do you or organize your notes? Um, so I basically, I have a big old folder that I, I recently transferred over to my laptop of like PDFs and shit. I really just, I, I kind of keep it like, it's just a big folder full of PDFs, but 
it helps a lot to kind of think of it chronologically. Um, hmm. That's how I do a lot of that. Is like because everything does inform the next thing in the in the chain. It is kind of shaped like a big tree. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Riley, I know. Um, what? I shaped like a big. Tree. It's it's arborescent. Who cares? Um, I didn't. I was not going to say anything like that. I was <laughs> fine, fine, fine. I was considering on. it. I was fine, <laughs> whatever. We'll get off this. Um, so, like, as for my research, I have, I have a notebook like that I have been taking notes in for a couple years now, and it, it was described by my editor as schizophrenic. Uh, that makes sense. So, so. <laughs> I will say good luck. Sounds sounds like our sounds like Armon also. It it has text that like so just be, because of the note how the notebook is like structured, I'll I will there will be like half a page of notes that's written with the notebook in the normal position and then I will forget which end of the notebook is the beginning and then I'll write on the same page but like upside oh down or at a 90 God. degree angle. So I'm... and so there are like several different like thought paths that go through this notebook that you can that you have to physically rotate the book to understand. That's that I, makes I so idea. much sense. Here, let like, me let me take a picture of it real quick. I'll post oh it. Oh my in chat. god, I would love to see this. I, I, I can't I can't share the thing the occult needlecraft uh little booklet because they sold out of it. They Oh man. They do well. Uh, but um I for what it's worth, um <laughs> A note-taking system that I personally am very fond of, um, just in general, not just for the occult. Take your central focus for, let's say, X research session, put it in a circle at the center of a page, draw lines out from it of the notes, like of your notes, and then if something relates to one of those notes, go out from there. And you just keep doing it and doing it. And it's, in my opinion, a very like, it's a very organic way of organizing your notes. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what um, I do for like uh, brainstorming mostly. So yeah. they're, I think they're asking how to organize like the library, like texts. Is that what? I, th I, th I think that's what they're like organizing research and whatnot. That seems about. about oh, it. organizing research. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I I use a mega folder that someone else has put together. Um. And then I also because I I hate to write words or type words. Um. I just kind of rely on like having things memorized in my brain. Um, you, are, you are definitely way better at the whole memorization aspect than a lot of other people I've talked to. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. Oh yeah. I'm like, one of the more forgetful people I know. Um, uh, but like, um, so like, like if you want to like, I don't want to like answer every question that people ask generally about things with like well in Thelema we do things like this but in Thelema they have a, a, a class system for documents A, B, C, D, or E right, um, right. and like you know like I um, you know D is like a rituals um, uh, C is like like theoretical stuff B is like like deep theory A is like um, like channeled um texts that require like some degree of like interpretation um uh like basically delivered from a spirit um and then e is like more like like public like uh documents and general statements i, okay. I don't quote me on that I once we finish once we finish pages that, in chat. Really uh once we finish this current talk i have a really good next question okay yeah what do you got not, i am posting gonna... my note pages in chat or in in cocom text Yippee. in cocom text base yeah. um, i also my my library is kind of how i organize my thoughts like my physic because I, I i collect the books that i have you know um so a lot of my like research the way i organize my research is physically laid out on my shelves so that I can kind of use that as like a mnemonic device. Like over here is where I like keep my chaos stuff, my Norse stuff, my oh same. Uh, I also my, do that. Uh, my like um, my my like Vedic religions and tantra stuff. Um, my like oh here's my Judaism stuff. Here's my Islam stuff. Like 
all, all of that like that's all organized um uh on my shelves and um yeah not yeah. really like in like a notebook right. um, bean bean what's your uh what's our new question here what do you guys feel about making a spirituality whole cloth or whole cloth uh, or is whole cloth poss possible? Not saying you're inspired by anything, but like building your own path by yourself. How would you even start that? That is from Light in the TV. Uh, I will say, good luck. Um, <laughs> like you can you can try, and if it works, more power to you. I would recommend maybe reading things that other people have written about religion. It might yes. help. Because um, like. When you, when you when you do that, like it's very off. It's like I see very frequently people like people's practice is a very like personal thing they construct themselves. If you're making like an entire spiritual system, that is not something you're going to be finished with for a very very long time. That is something yeah. that seems like a process of self discovery that could take fucking ages. So yeah, that my, is my my that's advice. A long... is try to follow someone else's <laughs> spiritual system. Uh, as as rigidly as possible and then realize that's impossible and that <laughs> then do not do that following like is creating your own religion well, yeah. so, something that uh something yeah. that Bede and i uh talked about like a long time ago was like um one thing that's one thing that we're kind of facilitating right now is like i mean it's very nice to have other people who like practice and research this kind of stuff to talk to because if you if you become isolated when uh, engaging with like occult topics, that's a very very easy way to like develop like deeply evil beliefs. Oh yeah, talk about <laughs> thing that will make you fucked up forever. Like yeah. is like, yeah. getting into magic this, and then not this is talking why to anyone. I anybody. generally don't recommend things to people, but I will like try to guide people in the right direction when they come to me. Like yeah. yes, like, oh my god. Like, oh, do, uh, should I get into occultism? I'm like no. <laughs> like, like it's like i don't know you i can't like there are people that i know and love that that i know for a fact should never get into the occult like yeah yeah I, like, I know i know some of those it's like I mean, it will fuck, fuck you I, up me, like personally i should that's have like asking, the occult. That's like asking like that's like asking should i do ayahuasca like every day for a month it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, like I don't know. Like, should you? I can't answer that. You, that's like a big decision. Um, uh... It's like it's like asking people, should I be Catholic? Like I I don't know. Like I, don't. <laughs> like, is is, is that gonna like fill whatever point. void in your life that only Catholicism can fill? I don't know you. <laughs> right. It, I I don't know. The fact that you're asking this could be a cry for help, or it could be like <laughs> genuine interest. Like I don't know. I can't know you. I don't know your relationship to these ideas. I cannot recommend this in good conscience. <laughs> I think it's important to note in relations to making something yourself that no no matter what you do, you are going to have some ideas that are similar to other things that have been done just because there's other things that have been done. There's so many of them. There's yeah. so many of them. And I think it's very possible to do interesting things. I knew someone who basi basically took this almost like Jungian approach to a personal pantheon built around their natal chart. Yeah. Yeah, there you um, go. And I think that was really interesting. Um, I, I don't personally like follow that. But I think it was a really interesting way of engaging with the occult. I will say uh, it's like oh. getting getting to the point where I think you can usefully kind of jazz around with like mix and match occult concepts is the sort of thing that takes a pretty significant degree of study and the sort of thing that requires yeah. talking to people. But it is something that you can do. Uh, oh, green, hex um, green hexagons. Uh, wait, has Andrew Chumley has a really good uh, essay uh, that's just called "Magic Is Not For All." <laughs> Like it's just like, because it's just not like it's just not a uh, a thing that like like computer programming isn't for everyone. With. Like yeah, it's uh, like right. it's like saying that everyone should take LSD. I think is is just a very ill-advised position. I um, I, I kind of I kind of lost it a second ago, but uh, Green Hexagons had a pretty fun fun question for us. What? Oh, uh, does this? I mean, I, I I'm I'm paraphrasing because I kind of lost the lost in uh, scroll is um, it the pop does... culture one yes yes G could you read that bean if you have if you have yes. eyes on it uh this might be a stretch but do you think the current interest in pop culture faith slash worship is an outgrowth from a desire to tailor make a religion it's an uh... outgrowth from chaos magic specifically yeah <laughs> like it's it's which is, oh. which is a desire to tailor make a religion they like they're they're people who they are people who basically made a religion and 
funnily enough, they all later became tantricas. Like they, they, yeah, they all. I didn't they all become kind of disillusioned with it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> real quick interjection. Who wrote the essay you mentioned, Riley? Andrew Chumbly. Uh, Andrew Chumbly. U M B L E Y. Um. That should be an opus school of magic of volume one, or no, it's volume two. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, it should be available online somewhere. Um, it's like a lot if of you things... ask me for it, I can find the mega link, the upload of all the different. Like, there's a, there's an Andrew Chumbly folder that'll have all of his books. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, Bean. Can we get a new question here? Yes, I actually. This is a really important one that I saw earlier. What qualities would a person have that you would say? This this person should not get into occultism. Uh, any if, sort if of schizoaffective disorder. Yeah, yeah. psychosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, if you, you already it's making your life worse, stop. If you already <laughs> struggle with like, you know, like a physiological mental grip on reality, like if you already have trouble with hallucinations, magic is the last thing in the fucking universe that you should do. <laughs> you should not do this. <laughs> There's a there's a there's a fun little condition we like to call magositis, um, <laughs> yeah, which uh, is basically magic induced psychosis. Um, yeah, because, uh, turns out if you spend like every day for a month kind of fucking around with your like intentionally fucking around with your grip on reality, it might exacerbate um, latent your grip on reality. Yeah, latent problems with having a grip on reality. <laughs> yes. I, Meditation just and if you don't, if you don't have to fully like. I feel like that's a pretty good, concise like. That's the answer to that. I just wanted that to be very clearly stated in the vod because I think that's super important. Yeah, very wise, Bean. I'm very wise. Um, if you are Soren, making, Soren if magic is making your life worse. Stop. Soren Soup has a really good question. Which occultist would be the best YouTuber or Twitch streamer? Like historical occultist. I um, I know the answer for Twitch streamer. I'll hmm. want Hubbard. Fuck. Yeah. No, L. Ron Hubbard really would wrecked. fuck would wreck shop on Twitch. He would be so good as a, <laughs> He'd be as a fucking Twitch amazing streamer. as a Twitch streamer. Like, okay, you okay. Know, okay. Wait, can you imagine? TikToker though, Jack Park. TikTok. Mmm. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, I think, no. I I I think I think that's Blavatsky. I think Blavatsky would I own think, TikTok. No. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. I've thought about. I've thought about. We were talking about Blavatsky on my blog a while back, and like you know. Like, would she be good on TikTok? No. Because Blavatsky had a little... Blavatsky had a little bit too much of that, like, entitled, out-of-touch rich lady energy. Right? Mm. She wouldn't... Like, Blavat... Yes, and she's very long-winded. And mm. a little too, like... A little too, like, in love with the sound of her own voice to be comfortable on TikTok. Um, so Blavatsky, she's a podcaster. No. Blavatsky would run a fucking juggernaut of a boomer Facebook page. Oh, oh no, that's God. good. That's really I good. Actually, I would, I think if Blavatsky was on TikTok, she'd be popular purely in an ironic sense. Yes. <laughs> over like following the vegan teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's like, exactly... like, like White Claw Gabe. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, Okay, here's the um, thing. Okay, I think who's I... the occultist that would be most like Big Time Tommy? Mm. Big Time Tommy. He's the Mr. Uh, Beast of Crowley Witchcraft. Academy, right? Hmm? It's gotta be Aleister Crowley. Probably, yeah. I it was. Yeah, no. I think you kind of have to. Hmm. <laughs> I mean. Okay, I we. Mojave, you and I actually talked about this with Jamie, like, a forever yeah. ago. But the, uh, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, Jamie asked us uh, who the Joe Rogan of occultism was, yeah. and without skipping <laughs> yeah, a beat, I was like, I know exactly who it is, and it's fucking Anton LaVey. I was, and I was like, I, I remember, like, sitting there, I was like, oh, I wish it's fucking Anton LaVey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what kind of content would Samuel Liddell McGreg uh, McGregor Mathers make? Ooh, ooh, um... Fuck, okay, okay. Mathers would definitely be, like... He he would be, like, an edutainment YouTuber. He'd be in kind of the same vein as, like, the spirit science guy. Huh. Because I feel like Mathers was, like... He had a... He... 
he absorbed a ton of like weird perennialist shit from you know being a theosophist but mathers also had like a much more academic background than a lot of the other people in the uh, golden dawn so i feel like he would have a more like educational dent to his stuff the binging with babish of occultism <laughs> uh, uh swedenberg Ooh. Uh, oh no, that's that. Okay, I feel like we I, can no, do I, I, I was saying that of I was saying that of Mathers. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, something along those Where lines. Would Swedenberg? Swedenberg would be like somewhere deeply annoying. Uh, Swedenberg like, would be extremely kind of popular on TikTok. Like, I, I think, I think I can safely what, say that. Like, he would is... be like. Swedenberg would be the the TikToker that's like daily inspirational quotes, <laughs> like oh, live, laugh, love. Yeah, that's Swedenberg. I, that's Swedenberg. Um, question. I Matt, hang on. What is? I I have, I have one more thing for this thread. I okay, need to okay. know what Joseph Smith's battleground online of choice is. <laughs> what's what's really Joseph Smith's away. <laughs> YouTube look like? Yeah. So I as as the as the Mormon here, I guess. Um, yeah. He's a channer. Oh God, that's, yeah. That's my, that's my feeling. That's my like gut feeling. Okay, it's like that's where you convince the wackos to do things, uh, right? What about that's Reddit? Where you get like, oh no, no because Joseph like Reddit, Smith. like, like he could not stand anywhere where he could be downvoted. Like, very true, very true. Ooh, okay, because he knew that that was bad for a cult leader. Yeah, like, mm. like you know, you know, QAnon is the place where fucking. The 4chan is the place where fucking QAnon festered. Yeah, like, yeah. If Mormonism was going to start today, it would start yeah. on 4chan. That, like, I think... Oh, hey, uh, follow the... Like, keep track of this thread. I found some gold plates in the fucking woods. Like, no, no. Uh, and it's then, like... You know, it, it, a deeply racist mythology about, you know, finding treasure in the woods. Oh, that's perfect 4chan shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, he would, he would be doing shit on 4chan, but he wouldn't necessarily be a 4chan user. You know, he would recognize that 4chan is, like, the place to be. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's, he's a Facebooker on 4chan. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, like, okay. Like, on his Facebook groups, he just, he just, like, blocks and removes anyone who disagrees with him. Yeah, and yeah. And then, like... Disseminates all of his shit in Q drops. Um, then that's that's where, right? Honestly, right. that's where modern day doctrine and covenants is being written. Um, <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> Someone's gonna compile it together in a book, and it'll be a holy book for people. I hate that. We should move on. Yeah, we should Bean, get a new question. Be Bean, what was your thing? Last question. Okay, so Bean hit us with something. Yeah. Um, May, what historical lost text would you most want to possess? Ooh. The missing 125 pages of the Book of Mormon. Ooh, very That's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit. Um, fucking Edward Kelly's notes. Like, Edward Kelly's unpublished notes that they have in the fucking oh. Amsterdam Occult the, University the, Library. The, 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 the John D notes that were burned as firewood. Yeah, yeah, oh. those two. Those two. <laughs> Those two. It's like the complete Enochian. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I honestly, that was my answer also. I um, yeah, the shit that he threw out. That got, burnt, that got burned bunch down of, in his bunch house. Bunch of missing Gnostic Gospels I would want. Um, oh. Really, I want, I want um, all the, like, all, so so there were there were several Andrew Chumbly books that he made one copy of and yeah. would give to one person to keep secret. Like, I want those. Uh, that's you what see I why we love this shit? Like, it, there's so much, like, lost secret documents and shit. It's, it's it so much rules. fun. It's it awesome. rules so hard. I love being an occultist. You would illustrate you know, them. I too. want, hmm. I want, I know in the fucking Papal office or whatever, the Papal coffers, there is a really, really, really old Bible. And I want that book. Mm hmm. Mm. I'm not even into that. That's not really my gig. Oh my God. That's you not guys my camp. Have any idea how many like ancient grimoires and like like magical manuscripts are in the Vatican archives that they don't let you look at because yeah. it's not, not like conducive to Catholicism? Like, there's so much like research that like could yeah, be being like, done, and like 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 the, the 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 thing is like the grimoires because like the people who are writing them were usually priests. Um, right, right. Like you find a grimoire in like a church library from like 1100, 
you don't get to keep it. You don't get to, right. to read it. It gets, right. like, it, gets, it gets like it gets like hushed away into some archive like oh. a lot of times. Right, they were like, chained to the shelves. Like you, you weren't allowed to take them home. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I'm talking like like current day researchers. Right, like, right. Like digging through archives yep. and stuff. Like they're like super happy if you find like stuff about the history of the church or like whatever. But right. if you find a grimoire, you you're just not uh, like as as important as that is to like right about this kind of stuff of the like, world. they don't yeah. like they don't like that you're researching that kind of thing and you're getting data on it like and that you're able to compare different versions of these same texts like that's just not important to them um and it sucks my my roommate just brought me fresh pita and tzatziki oh baby Goddamn. let's go thank you smack yo you know what i've had this whole time in the background baja blast Ooh, very nice very I've nice got, i've got white claws Beam, Topical. could you grace us with a new question? Grace us with a new question. Let's let's see. Um... Oh yeah, so Plant Guardian says the Vatican has a bunch of Talmudic responsa they won't fucking repatriate. Yeah, yeah exactly. what the fuck? Don't give that shit back. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> back. I bastards. Oh. There, I want to become the Pope. I think I should be the Pope. I think I could make. Well, the according to Discordianism, I have some good news for you. Yeah. Everyone's a pope in Discordianism. Well, because we both share a name, Francis. So I mm. think I could just do really convincing old man drag and just be the pope. I now have your name. Uh, Natronium? You, <laughs> you know my first name, bitch. Don't fucking... Uh, don't do not. <laughs> Natronium, anyway, my, my, my notebook yeah. picks were posted in COCOM text in the Discord. No one Am can I see No one, no one can see that, CT. Uh, oh, it's in motherfucker. Yeah, stream live <laughs> Yeah, Coco uh, Texas is for the uh, co-hosts. It's a special oh, club that fine. you guys don't get to join. Sharing. Fine, fine, fine. Um. Hmm. Find a There's something. only like one question. Like, there's a surprising lack of questions. <laughs> all the, like, Hang on, I, 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 I have to read. Ah, the secret third channel. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. What did, there's this question, which I know not everyone here is going to answer, but what do y'all's everyday magical practice look like, or do you have any? Oh, actually, no, here, cut that. What is perennialism? Submit! I meant to that earlier, and I forgot. Well, I was going to answer that. that. that Go I ahead. What is perennialism? It's what is perennialism? It's like... It's the uh, space between your gooch and your testicles. <laughs> Moving yeah, on. Next question. Next question. No, the perennialism is like the the belief that like truth is like eternal and unchanging, and that we've like kind of deviated from it, and that like we have to get back to like universal like uh, principles that are like the like it, it, it gets it gets weird when they start getting the logos involved with it. It's, it's um, the idea that like all world religions are descended from some ancient root religion that is and like everything is kind of inferior forms of this ancient proto religion. Oh and yeah. There's like Fringe. theological like implications to that and the word perennial means eternal like it's like also yeah. that like mystics can like tap into this like eternal and unchanging truth but like also like if a yeah, mystic yeah, has an experience that's different than what we think the eternal unchanging truth is they're just wrong um which is very funny to me but, but basically the, a lot of times they see the universe like a great chain of being like it uh very hierarchically and if, if you have like a system of mysticism that doesn't hold that then they're like Fuck you! You don't agree with Plato. They're very like Platonic. It's yeah, yeah. It's oh. it's very much like I'm Catholic, but I also like Plato. Yeah. Q, yeah. Uh, Q has a question. What is a hobby slash personal practice that is important to you, uh, but unrelated to your work with the occult entirely? A hobby. Unrelated to yeah. my work. Ho like ho like hobby or practice that is like important to you, like magical in some way, but or. Hmm. Um, Actually, no, no. I, th I think you just wants to know, like, what, like, just what we do in our off hours. Oh. Um, I, I cook. I'm very, I'm very into uh, food and gastronomy. I, I make pottery, and draw. Um, and I'm really into philosophy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I personally, um, it depends on the week, but this week it's been really heavily into the Minecraft server. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Also, I fuck. Hmm. There you yeah. have it. Indeed, there you have it. What's my favorite thing to cook? Like, um, recently, I've been getting into Indian food. It counts as a hobby. That's my hot take. If you're putting a bunch of time into it, that counts as a hobby. Does that count sure. as a hobby? 
Mm, sure. I think I, so. I stream, or a job I, if you're getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> I stream, I cook, I write, I play music, I read books, I do all sorts of, all, all sorts of shit. Uh, I Ever mostly Queen? do hobbies. I don't really work with the occult in any way. Uh, Everqueen, what is your favorite thing to cook? Recently, I've been getting really into Indian food. I've mm -hmm. I've been perfecting my masala recipe, and it's been going quite oh, well. Your masala looks fucking delicious, by the way. I really want I, I want to try that shit. In live blogging, <laughs> I'll share some of my pottery. Um... Hmm. Uh, uh, Sylph yeah. asks, what agencies other than the TSA are spells in the U.S. government? Which one is the most spell? Literally the CIA. Yeah. Like, yeah, so, like, kind of, yeah. It's it's just just the CIA. Literally, like, there were so many years where the CIA just believed that North uh, that yeah. Korea and the Soviet Union had figured out mind control based on nothing. Yeah, they were literally like, but what if they have? And then <laughs> they spent millions of dollars to torture people over, like, 20 years. Oh my god, to connect this question to an earlier question, our government and the occult slash what book? I want Rasputin's spell book. That the, that the World War II... What? What? Elaborate. I don't know. I don't know how truthful this is because I learned it from a person that I then later realized is kind of wrong about a lot of things. So I probably should have fact-checked this before saying it. But to the best of my knowledge, there was yeah. some sort of like push to find like r the spell book of Rasputin, because you know like gestures at the man right that that I mean, was relatively important to apparently the occult side of the american government and the occult side of nazis uh, oh also and if that book's real i want it thank you veleth and anarchos and for giving me compliments on my pottery hey, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure hmm because like I'm not convinced that Rasputin had like anything really all that mystical going on with him uh, no, the, the yeah, go ahead. Yeah, R Rasputin was like a very, a very charismatic man, and uh, was like th through and through a grifter. But there was wasn't really he has like kind of like mystical qual qualities, kind of like posthumously ascribed to him that weren't uh, that were kind of bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, although he was like definitely a mystic, like that's like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But whether, well, whether or not he was like casti casting, casting, whether or not he was like casting spells and like performing intricate rituals to get the Russian er like monarchy to listen to him, he didn't have to do that. They were all very stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, he was useful political scapegoat. Also, very true, May. Yes, very true. Oh, oh, here's a good here's a good question. Also from Q. Maybe you answered this already, but what kinds of questions about the occult do you have the most fun answering slash enjoy explaining? Oh, um, hmm. I, I mean, I really like alchemy. Alchemy is like one of my favorite parts of the occult to explore. Um, I also, I really, really, I really like questions like fucking around with like elemental theories and hmm. like cosmologies in general. I really like talking about like getting into that specific type of nitty gritty when it comes to like cosmologies especially because like a lot of a lot of my actual practice is informed by like newtonian application of the scientific method to alchemical theories and like the system of the world and how that reflects the nature of god but it's i like talking about atomic theories through an occult perspective um, my favorite, like, kinds of questions are ones that usually arise when I'm doing a tarot reading for somebody. And, because I don't know how to give people life advice, but I can give people advice on rituals pretty well. Uh, mm. so, like, I can be like, the cards are indicating you're kind of lacking this kind of energy or whatever. Here's something that'll add that spice into your life or whatever. Uh, right, right. Um, I, and uh, I, can't then give, like, I can't give you oh, life advice, but have you considered the life advice ritual? <laughs> yeah, have you, have you considered the. Um, I can't give you life advice, but like this will this will like accelerate the kind of like process that you're trying to like you know, that the cards indicate that you're trying to. Right, engage. right. Like, um, or th this will allow you to slow things down, or like. 
put a damper on this like element of chaos that's in your life like this what i um th that's where i have fun like answering questions because a lot of times people ask me questions they don't give enough info when they're asking questions but like if i know like i don't usually read for people unless i know them really well and when i know them really well i can be like oh this uh you should do a greater uh pentagram ritual banishing the uh the mm -hmm. sign of pisces like uh right, in right. in uh water you know right right what about you bean um you get a lot of these bean i like the train of thought that comes when people um challenge my thought so like when i'm positing something about let's say great example potion stream um i was talking I, this was a hypothetical exp thought experiment done in a very chaotic way. But if I was trying to make a potion to physically teleport myself to innkeeper's house, how would I right. do it? And, <laughs> and caretaker was there, and I was talking about why I picked the ingredients, and caretaker was like, well, I, and I mentioned offhandedly, well, obviously Muffins has the ability to transcend time and space. And CT, fully serious, why? <laughs> and then I realized I had to explain that in going at a vaguely Irish, you know, vaguely Celtic lens here, there's only three elements, the sky, the sea, the earth, and we represent something that's been touched by all three in a very intimate way. Right, we had a, a lovely conversation where we started, like I just said, explaining, like, Irish spiritual atomic theory, and, like, and, how that relates to spell work, and it was a lot really of fun. Cool. Yeah, I really uh, like what happens when people. I like when there's three elements that make a fourth, um, like Ooh, in, yeah. in, uh, in, in in like um, certain parts of Kabbalah and also Golden Dawn, like Tarot Kabbalah. Um, the first three elements are air, water, and fire. Aleph, Mem, and Shin, um, that come together and produce Earth, um, which is why at the center of the rosy cross you see the the first layer has three petals and then the next layer has seven petals which are the seven planets and then the next layer has 12 petals which are the 12 yeah. signs of the zodiac and those are the 22 hebrew letters that make up the ontological building blocks of our reality um because... i i have always really enjoyed how like like chinese alchemy has five elements but they exist in a cycle like nothing exists oh. as like Nothing exists in, like, everything is in flux. Everything is constantly becoming the next element in the chain. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's a way more, like, it's such a stronger foundation so for, like, learning about a culture. Some of the three gunas, Rajas, Thomas, and Papas? Uh, I do not. Oh, it's like a, uh, thing in some Indian traditions. I, oh, oh yeah, they have their own them. thing. I haven't done much research into that. The, the, oh, no, that's the kind of enough. uh at risk of saying something completely out of pocket that's their soul <laughs> right, salt right. mercury um <laughs> oh okay okay yeah yeah i i get that uh wait the tv ask are these streams archived anywhere um yes mm -hmm. this will be up on the youtube um yeah I have, a bit yes. of, I have a bit of a backlog right now it will be on twitch for two weeks um so you have plenty of time to watch it uh. Don't you worry. Something I'm really fond of in the concept of like a three things that can kind of make a fourth. One of Agrippa's uh, contemporaries, Thomas Vaughn. Um, I love Thomas Vaughn. Yeah. Wrote that, wrote about air not even being a true element, but being the medium through which elements interact with each other. Ooh, and yeah. being this sort of like, like, and it was such an evocative text. I really should find it after this stream. That's but really it. it yeah. It was like, imagine like watercolor. The air would be the water, and then you've got these three colors that you dab in different areas and they radiate out. Right, right. That's very Linda similar. has a book on Eric Thomas Vaughn hmm. um, that he wrote because of a introduction to a book on Thomas Vaughn that was written by anarchist poet uh, and mystic Kenneth Rexroth, where he was like... Um, Thomas Vaughn and his wife were doing sex magic. And if you read closely into Thomas Vaughn, you can see that. Um, and that inspired, like, Peter Lavenda to go on, like, a whole, like, fucking thing and, like, actually research this and write a book about it because 
it seems to be the case. Like, um, at, at least according to him. Right, um, right. And I think it's cool. I think it's cool to interpret alchemy through sex magical things because then it, uh, it, it gets really complex why I think this right, is cool. Right, right. It, it is cool. I, another tidbit of that before we move on is also the um the line um it is it is mother nature's um ledger and her it is where she records everything she has done or will do in oh, reference to air it fucks so hard it fucks it fucks Thomas yeah, Bond is so good like even if you don't yeah. interpret him as like a sex magician um his wife is still very important to his work and also like all of his like shit about alchemy like just fucks it's yeah cool. it's very evocative and it's like it's evocative in a way that's like different from a lot of the alchemical writers he's, of the time like he's, he's just so based. unique yeah he's, like he's so cool he's just based like <laughs> yeah long and if short you're of it. interested in alchemy <laughs> like a uh, guy you want to read is thomas vaughn like yeah by that's what you should take away chat this yeah uh b do we have, have any back. uh I'm have any more questions in chat? More questions. Give me like three seconds. I'm switching back to my computer because I'm no longer. Take your time. Take your time. Um, voice connected. Let's take a look. Um, in the same vein as these three, could you possibly? Um, no. Okay. Oh, here's a. F God, these are a couple of really good questions. All right. What aspect of occultism have you not studied that you would like to explore more? Let's let's start there. That's a good Oh, one. I want to hear this, yeah. Um wh why don't Okay. I I definitely um I've recently just like for the book I've been filling in a ton of gaps in my understanding, like really hammering down my my understanding of like a a lot of historical occultism and how it builds on itself. I would really I, I'm very excited to get more into um, the the Rosicrucians and the Golden Dawn. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's my like, shit. Nons. Yeah. Nons. What about you, Riley? Um, I don't know if it qualifies as occultism, uh, but Tibetan Chud and Boon uh, practices. Mm. Um, that's, that's an area of interest for me. And then... Um, it's saying I haven't researched this, but I a lot of the other stuff like that I want to like say like I've already done a little bit into because I just kind of I dip my fingers in many pies, right. um, as you uh, should. Yeah, I I can't help wriggle them around. Um, and that rhubarb. <laughs> that rhubarb. <laughs> That's a rhubarb. What is this? <laughs> That's type of pie. It's pies you're wiggling your fingers around in the weird yeah. occult little pies yeah um idiot because because you work with a lot of like vaguely uh vaguely british people so that's why i said rhubarb pie okay um, um i uh sorry. honestly honestly uh kimbanda umbanda uh mm, like brazilian yeah. like uh like occult practices um yeah oh, so hard and i would like, like to like brazilian have someone, occult like, practices? I, I don't want to i don't want to like you know like jump no, into it, like no. With, with no knowledge or like you know i like i want to read and then like have someone like who's legit like hopefully yeah, yeah. Um, no that's a this really is, good like, point future stuff like this is this is like distant future yeah can, uh but i i know real. some like like kim banderos and uh fucking um oh my god what an interesting practice because it's it's oh, got this yeah. like, blend of like grimoire magic uh indigenous practice african traditions um and uh just it's very like, good magic it's no, very really good. Uh, like central and south american occult like occult shit and like folklorist in general are having like a bit of a renaissance recently <laughs> like there's been yes 
like people are like a lot of these practices that have been like extraordinarily secretive and closed for like a hundred years like they won't even talk to outsiders about the shit they're doing are finding like like just in the last like 10 20 years have been finding a little bit more acceptance in the mainstream like people aren't trying to fucking murder them anymore and so they've been a little more comfortable like opening up to outsiders and like talking about what their religion involves and it's like, there are so many really like, exciting to learn about. Like it's so I, fucking fascinating. That um, I know about like in even Europe and the US that like exist but like don't want to come forward and don't want to like Yeah, yeah. be exposed to like the there's a public. there's been a question for me specifically, Soren Soup. What is it like being friends with so many wizards? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be yeah, honest. Mojave. Um, that's a good question. I think it's cool that a bunch of my friends, uh, know about all this, th about all this shit that I find very interesting and, um, know nothing about, because every time I talk to them, I, I learn something new, and it's very important for me to be, um, uh, one, open to, open to learning about new shit, and two, being humble. I feel like yeah. I, get, I, I personally get a little wrapped up in my own head about some things, uh, just feel like okay there's no more mountains left to climb or anything like that but then i like spend one stream listen to these two talk and i'm just like oh no there's like a whole other world for me to go explore okay okay uh, riley riley would you agree with the statement um like if you're doing it right studying magic makes you intellectually humble yeah basically yeah. like i uh, there's there's so many like times where like uh, the, People are like, oh, you're, you're so smart. You know so much about this. But, like, there's so many times where I've been the dumbest person in the room. <laughs> Literally, just, yeah. Like, 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 like if you're you lucky, are, yeah. you get to be around these people who are fucking brilliant and know so much and, like, have, have put in fucking, you know, 50 years into their yeah. practices no. that they do. And Chat, you just need get to, to be understand. lucky enough to, like, like, have conversations with them. And, um... You're like, like this is chat, this is where I want to go. Like, this is that, what I want to like, be. Like these are my Riley people. and I like even I know that like y'all talk in my inbox sometimes about like how do you know so much? Like Riley and I are like mid compared to a lot of people in the occult scene. Like you know like I'm mid, I'm mid compared to like people on uh like people like who live three blocks away. Like right. that's great. <laughs> I, like, I actually, even, like <laughs> this is actually a really good note, and it's something I wanted to mention earlier. Um, uh, the, in the question earlier, the um, what do you want to learn about in relation to the occult? I really think I personally have been a lot of it's been revolving around like real life stuff that I just need to get up to speed with my occult knowledge to yeah. further invest in the occult knowledge. That's currently where I am in it, and like I think that's a really good thing to note, like tying into you know CTN by Lee being in in their words, mid, compared to some other occultists. <laughs> you never stop learning. Like Never, 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 never. I never, I've never, never. And if you think you've stopped learning, then you've stopped practicing, in my opinion. Yeah. I, um, I heartily agree. <laughs> but, uh, uh, which actually is a really good tie-in. Have there been any periods in your life where you have stepped away from the occult? How slash why did you start up again? Oh. Uh, yeah, recently I took a month break because I was having a episode. Um, and Ooh. it's not good to fuck around uh, when you are having derealization. Like, don't fuck around with magic when you're derealized. Yep. Uh, so, uh, uh -huh. I, I just took a break, and I'm getting back on my shit. Uh, I'm trying to do Resh and Stellar Transvocation and Lesser Banishings. Um, but, I mean, today I've missed all my rituals. I've, you know. Yeah. You know, I think that's how it is. Mood. <laughs> uh, I, I spent the day with, uh, w with a nice person, and sometimes your alarm goes off for your ritual, and you're just like, I'm snuggling, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, this is, this is good magic enough. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, I, let's see, I, I don't know, my like my relationship with like my practice and magic in general has been a very long slow curve upwards but i'm also just like fucking busy and because part of my job involves like a lot of reading yeah. i've incorporated that into my practice so i haven't i do not i do not do nearly as much like 
like proper formal high ritual shit that Riley does. Um, but it's also just like this shit takes time, man. Like I, I've never had to take like a big formal break, but there have been times where it's like, you know, you just can't fit the shit in. Um, yeah. yeah, I, uh, oh God, I read, but I, I, I feel like I don't read oh. enough. I like, it Damn. doesn't, it, it, the, the, you can never feel enough when you're talking about like occult literature, like, because everything is informed by like 20 different things. And the moment you read those 20 different things, you then have multiplied it like by yeah. another 20. So like you have like 400 things you have to read. Involuntary um, Pro no. has a question. I think they've been trying to get in for a little while. What would ancient alchemists or magicians respond if you showed them a periodic table? What if I showed Plato a fucking super collider? I um, I will say though, I think if you showed Plato a super collider, I think he'd punch it. As for the other what? ones, I I Left don't to go back in time and show all the pseudo Geber people uh, the periodic table. Um, okay, if you and went back in time... Like, this is it. And we're like, this is what you've been trying to do. Like, we, we've got it. Like, we've got something approximating, like, a map of the universe in, like, they would, elements. Like, if you if you showed the periodic table to the pseudo Gebar people, it would they would make it a holy document. Like, it would be, yeah. a, it would be a level of... It would be a level of, like, spiritual and scientific <gasps> knowledge that is completely incomprehensible to people <laughs> nowadays like it would be the hang key on. to the universe itself hang it on. is I, and people don't think about it like that hang on i've i've seen a, a quick break small stroll just says that yuji naka has been arrested for what i understand is insider trading what yeah. hello <laughs> yuji, hang on hang on can you send send us the Google article send, send it in, send it in stream live on turtle please tell me that mr sonic is in jail yeah yuji naka is the guy that heads sonic team like he's one yeah. of he's the lead programmer on on sonic the hedgehog he's the, he is the creator of sonic the hedgehog um, oh my god let's see let's one see. hour ago he got arrested what yeah. the hell? No, he got arrested. <laughs> okay. Like, like, like a 95% conviction rate. Like, I, 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 yeah. I, I, a number of people, including a Square Enix employee, yeah. a number of people, including a Square Enix, have been uh, insider trading related to Dragon Quest game announcement. What? What? They were That's... insider trading Dragon Quest. And they got arrested. I'm, 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 re I'm reblocking the post with this because why does this insane fucking news keep happening while I stream? <laughs> why? <laughs> Riley, were you there for the other <laughs> stream where this happened? I don't. I don't. I don't think she was around for this. I, th I think she showed up later. R okay. Riley's. I wasn't around for Kojima either. Tragically. No. 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 It wasn't, it wasn't no, 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 Kojima. No, no, no. Um. I, I want to tell the story, Riley. Do you want to know where I was when Shinzo Abe was assassinated? <laughs> Is that I where was, it was? I was right fucking here. I was streaming fucking so Final Fantasy VII with these guys while Shinzo Abe was getting his back blown out. <laughs> like, literally it was a magical out. evening. Someone in chat was like, guys, stop everything. Shinzo Abe just got assassinated. We were like, haha, very funny. It's like, no, 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 he, really. Like, somebody just shot him and killed him with a shotgun. So we were like, what? <laughs> Changed my fucking life. Most successful assassination of our time. I and God bless yeah, him. we've talked about how it's like, wow, making a really strong case for political assassinations here. <laughs> okay, thank you for no, telling no. us that, um, smallest turtle. That was <laughs> wild. But but yeah, no. If you if you showed like early medieval alchemists a periodic table, it's it would be a it would be they would add it to the Quran. It, it would be a. Yeah. It would be a divine document because let's be honest it kind of is like yeah. like i don't i there are very few things that humans have created that are more deserving of like the true word of god and the periodic table as an alchemist <laughs> if you look at a chart that has a codified way a, of categorizing elements and theoretically a way to transform one to another like that is no there, you can you can yeah, literally old, trans you can literally diagram um, from like late 1800s uh, chemistry textbooks called the House of Matter, that yes. is on yes, yes, yes. The, that is on the tarot card, the universe, 
in Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck at the very bottom. It looks like some pyramids. It's it's a it's the it's all the elements of our universe um, that they knew at the time. Like, mm. uh, it's it's one of my favorite little touches to a card. It's just this little like series of gold lines, and you don't know what like you're looking at. It just looks like a big building, but it's it's a diagram of the elements uh, in the universe card, which is the universe. Yeah, uh, makes me happy. Um, mm. All right, uh, Bean, could we get another question? Yes. Uh, give me three seconds. Here's a good one from Smallest Turtle. Are there any magical systems that you find very evocative in media, shows, books, etc.? Hmm. Oh, man. I, I generally don't like answering questions like this because I feel like when I say them, I feel like if I, if I answer questions like this on my Tumblr, that people are going to be like, oh, man, this TV show has the most accurate, like, depiction, <laughs> and we should form a cult around it or whatever. Yeah, we, should, big, we, should, fat, we should preface. Big we think... disclaimer, like, narrative interest, thematic interest, not, yeah, like, yeah. We think, it, we think like it's cool, life. not like we think this is impressive or something. Yeah, yeah, not like we think this is I don't is watch truth. enough, like, fantasy, like, magical things. Yeah, honestly, like... I there haven't really I been do. any magical systems in media that I've found more or less evocative. Like a lot of that shit is like whenever people point me towards interesting magical systems in media, it's it's like I know the source texts. Like I know where all this shit comes <laughs> from. Like I've read right. where it, yeah, like oh, and, and, you know, and then it like drives you crazy because it's like you shouldn't be mixing those two things. They're they're, they're, they're fundamentally like based on right. different principles of the universe like right right it's, it's like you can't it's like you can't mix like gabarian alchemy with like weird some... like greco-roman like astrology those things don't mix ontologically like it's yeah, <sighs> yeah. like um... like when people talk about it's like oh i it's like i'm a pop culture magician and i'm basing i base my practice on shit from the elder scrolls i'm like that's literally just roman religion like <laughs> if you look at how magic works in the elder scrolls it's just straight up how romans thought the universe worked. like you can read actual magical texts and have right, like well. a more historically so informed opinion about this you don't have to take it from the elder scrolls right it's like that like what's the roman equivalent of like the pgm that like people can like i have the pgm <laughs> it's it's like yeah. it's like that thing you said once where you were all over you were sharing some thoughts about like welcome to night vale i forget what it was and you're like i kind of like the media that inspired welcome to night vale mainly like lovecraft and the occultists that inspired lovecraft yeah yeah it's 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 that type of shit it's for what it's worth i really love the off-brand gnosticism that um uh invisible sun presents which is tabletop role-playing system um it's it's not like good occultism in the sense of like don't do it in real life right it's right in it's very thematically interesting like it's very it's very pretty land guardian very cool. pgm pgm is greek uh, magical papyri yes greek magical mm -hmm. papyri which okay and I, I love how people like modern occultists talk about the pgm because good it's like girl. what that text actually was in real life is it's basically like if you were a traveling merchant and you were like selling magic from port to port in the Mediterranean, you would have, you know, you'd have a text like the PGM, like in your ship to act as a sort of like menu for the services that you were providing. It's like people talk about it like it's the Bible when in reality it's a lot closer to like like a dude selling talismans out of the back of his van <laughs> like it's not like it is not high magic it is whatever the opposite no, of high magic is and it yeah. rules um uh, the scrappiest is like, like, stinkiest like, magic what's, what's you ever so crazy, see. Like, is that like people when they're talking about grimoires they don't think it was like an oral tradition at all or this is no like oral like components to it that like right but, but like there's so much that's like not like said that you've you've got oh to yeah her and it's like you you've got to like add... you know the you know how in every like greco-roman magical text there's like series of vowels and whatever it's just like oh you say this and then oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, you know what those are okay i love barbarous oh. names like that um they're okay they're they're probably musical notation 
Oh, like, it's probably that. That Holy is probably shit. notation for like a, a ritual chant that like That's... the people that had the text probably they probably knew the tune. And it's probably just, it's detailing which tune they're supposed to sing. You know, no, that fucking has me? to be it, actually. Oh, my God. That's you know what really cool. In, um, in, like, ceremonial magic practice, when I see people uh, who also do ceremonial magic, and they'll vibrate, like, a um, specifically, they'll vibrate E-A-O as, like, mm -hmm. E-A-O, and it'll all be right. the same note. But for me, I learned it from somebody they uh before i was doing that but like i learned from somebody to go e -a -o, and it's much better because it's it's, it's so much like better the of the descent of like the divine into matter like right right oh. yeah it's Which also is what it, it just is it also just sounds prettier <laughs> it's just yeah oh and then like when you get the overtones like you're supposed to do when you're vibrating right over, right like, yeah it fucks it fucks so hard Speaking okay. of what, uh, speaking of fuck so hard, this is a much earlier one that the I was waiting for the certain... perfect time for. Okay. Does being a sex wizard make you better or worse at sex? <laughs> Ooh, um, at sex. Hmm. Well, at sex, I, I, I will, I will say, you know, I, I, I do not to mix sex magic and like intimacy. If that makes sense. Yes. I do. No. I do know Agreed. that L. Ron Hubbard was surprisingly good at sex, and he did some interesting had. Got up to some interesting shit with Jack Parsons, so... Eh, maybe. <laughs> Jack Parsons was a sexy sex magician. Yeah, did did, <laughs> did Jack Parsons bone down, like, besides the sex, ma yeah. sex magic? Yeah, he was a thelemite. Yeah, he was a thelemite. <laughs> there you go. Look, I like a religion that fucks. And you know, right? I like a fox. I like a fuck that's religions. Look, you probably would like thelemite. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Thelema? Oh god. It's like, let me tell you about Homestuck, but let me tell you about Thelema. Yeah. Okay, no. I'm annoying. Here's, we're just yeah. as annoying quick, as the Homestuck. Here's a quick thing. So interesting just how sounds slash music slash words are important to rituals and spirit uh, communal in some cases. Caretaker. Uh, sorry, say that again. I think the first part got cut off. So interesting how sounds slash music slash words are important to rituals and spirit communal. Uh, I imagine that's supposed to be communication in some cases. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like in you want to. You want the in, word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. It's and just from like a somatic perspective, like it's good ritual design to involve as many parts of the participants as possible. Like you want to have yeah. auditory and vocal and like se like as many sensory components as you that's, possibly can. That's my that that's what got me into like magic because meditating it's it's about removing all those things a lot of times. So it depends on the meditation, but like, you know, typically the meditation that you're taught, it's about removing all these like stimuli, stopping things, stopping behavior, stopping thoughts. Uh, where magic it, you are adding behaviors, adding thoughts, adding words, adding smells, adding music, adding clothing, adding colors, adding statues, adding uh, in a very you know, specific and the, controlled way. Control of your like your clenching your ass muscles. Like your yeah, yeah. Uh, your your throat you're trying to uh, you know control like the overtones. You're trying to use your entire brain power to visualize this thing and to hear it and smell it and see it mentally as you hear and smell and see mentally, uh, physically the things around you at the same time. And all of this together culminates in like the ritual trance. And, yeah. Um, you can get cool visions delivered to you. Oh, after. really? <laughs> a, a, a good um, the excitatory state. A good visual exercise I like to use when trying to explain that in a more approachable way is um, dominoes. So, uh, so, um, so like if you're doing a ritual, let's say that's the, let's say your, your intent, let's say that's the first domino. I want to cast spell of turn CT inside out. Mm -hmm. If I had a strain of CT's hair, that's another domino. If I have, mm -hmm. you know, if I had the right music playing, if I have an incense blend that's custom, if I have a like, you know, a fucking cornerstone of CT's house, 
each of these are dominoes, and each domino adds further impact to the spell. That's the visual visual language I like using because it makes the most sense to me. Which I feel right. like is definitely a little simplistic in some ways. It's not the most nuanced, but it's a good way to start. I think. It, it makes sense when you're trying to explain it to someone. This is why mm -hmm. Alice Crowley's book Seven 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 is like important. People rag on it a lot because they're like, "Oh, it like, uh, it fucking." Uh, it makes it all so mathy, but like, really, like, if you're trying to like get a specific energy in the room, like he, he gives you a list of the the incenses, the colors. The, it's like you gotta have a way names, to quantify the, that. The, you the, know? the numbers, the the um, the the kinds of tools to be using. Like, um, that's you know, um, it's important. Yeah, uh, it, it, and like, once you memorize somebody else's list, it's much easier to like make changes to the list like in your own head like really yeah and and like be like oh this you know it doesn't work for me and so i i replace it with this but like having having like a body of information to work off of initially right, right. is like it's like it's not it's not about um you know following this like to the nines but like um really it's just about having like the initial language because like yeah. you know uh people say like oh it's so hard to learn language as an adult but like really like Adults can learn languages much faster than, um, uh, like, babies can, because babies take, like, fucking five years to learn a language. Yeah, uh, babies are idiots. A year. Uh, you yeah, already have a language stupid. to work off of and use your, like, um, yeah. use y your language to, like, translate into, like, you know, baby is just acquiring the, like, capacity for language. And, like, yeah. initially, you're, you're, you got to, like, acquire the capacity for, like, magical language. Bean, um, could we get another question? Yes. Um, can any of you speak on demonolatry? I've seen so much of that on TikTok lately, and I feel like some people don't realize the implications of working with demons slash, uh, I, quote, demons, quote, evil entities. Interesting. I... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, interestingly, I you were done. I'm very careful about what I call a demon because my indigenous ancestors' belief systems were demonized with Catholic Church, aka not all spirits are demons, and not all demons are demons. I think the second part of that question is much more interesting than the first part of that question. Yeah, no, I was actually <laughs> having. Is this demonolatry the like system where they're like, we're not binding these things with pacts and uh, you know, uh, doing the, yeah, the yeah. classical grimoire thing I think of like in this context, with God? It's also um, like I think in this yeah. context, demonology is just demons. I think in this context, it's being used as kind of an umbrella term to just refer to so messing in general, with demons. Like I like the approach, but like if you're working with the Goetia, like these are things you kind of want to like have in Do check. Do by the book. Like yeah. yeah, like like as 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 much as I want like the approach to be like non hierarchical, like in magic. Yeah. You know, like, like hierarchy kind of has its like place and like being like uh having having like something bigger to to push around the thing that you're actually trying to get do the work for you is um i good. i do like the idea of approaching demonology from like an anti-colonial perspective like it's yeah. even just like yeah. even just the emotional cool approach of like even just the emotional approach of like i like one of i did a shitload of demonology research like a couple years ago like i did a yeah. Buckload of that. Yeah. I, I think some of y'all might remember that. I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I really, I really enjoyed collecting these like popular mythologies, like even within, even within Christianity, of like hell as a functioning society, and like what does that mean, theologically and cosmologically, and so I think there's room for, like, doing demonolatry in an interesting like anti like anti-colonial way that can incorporate a unique perspective like that i will say though it will take a significant amount of work to kind of put a system like, together okay. that like yeah, I'm, i was gonna I just... say build a system like that that isn't cringe and i know that sounds <laughs> stupid but it's like it's uh, magic theatrics is important for magic it has to feel right yeah, yeah. like it's which is why I cannot do fucking superhero magic. Like, what and is the I, deal? That, like, <laughs> that, that, like, chaos magic, pop culture magic trends. We, like, we we that... brought up we brought up pop culture magic in like kind of like in a more objective way. But we, I I I noticed y'all stifled your own personal feelings about it, and I okay, I agree. Okay. Yeah, no, it takes me out. What are you doing? Like, you know, well, it's like there, I don't there's, even... there's there's like place for like fiction in magic. I think yeah. Kenneth Grant is a genius for including fucking Lovecraft into practice uh, yeah. i want to include fucking finnegan's wake into practice at some point i want to write some finnegan's wake rituals but like 
it's gotta not be cringe. It's gotta like it's gotta like <laughs> have like some verisimilitude. Um, Here's my problem with like superhero magic and shit, is like the underlying concept of that type of pop culture magic does not bother me whatsoever. Like the fucking Sesame Row guy, like who just uses the yeah. fun like. Like, I fucking love that dude. That's one of, like, in my opinion, one of the best examples of, like, hey, let's take something that is clearly not intended to be read as, like, esoteric symbology and then imply, like, apply a very rigorous, deeply thought out system of, like, esoteric symbology to it. Like, let's, let's take this extraordinarily seriously and then just see what it produces. And the guy who's doing it is clearly, like, a very experienced, like, cardomancer. Like, the dude knows how to handle cards and knows how to, like, structure a reading. But the reason that I kind of don't like superhero magic shit is that the Sesame Row guy isn't interacting with, like, a fandom that already struggles with people having parasocial relationships to the source media right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people already aren't telling each other to kill themselves over sesame like sesame street discourse i legitimately feel that like a lot that of the you're people aware of the, uh, god forbid <laughs> um i i do feel that like a lot of the people that are engaging in like that type of pop culture magic are literally like they do not have the media analysis skills to do this in an interesting and healthy way hello there yeah. yeah yeah that, like that really of the is occult. the problem like it could be like also like yeah no, I, I have like such respect for people who like can put something together and like make it work for themselves like but like for me that just it it, it i it, i've gotta like have the kind of like it's gotta fuck it's gotta like it's gotta like put me gotta in the space yeah it's, i can't it's gotta um, fuck. i can't i can't uh it you have to be able to like be in like a very serious like ritual trance and if there's something that'll like um take you out of it like just... <laughs> captain america <laughs> yeah captain america <laughs> then god you know I think how am important. i supposed to see the face of y'all off you know like <laughs> yeah captain like, america's it's... there Captain America's there. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, it's, like, it's like almost, um, it's like it's like Sephiroth is there. <laughs> to quote something that actually CT said, um, not during this chat, but on Tumblr, you shouldn't let something that someone owns the trademark to seriously influence your occultism and your yeah. faith, your yeah. religion, and your practice. Stop. Stop letting corporations own your gods. Yeah, that's, that's just fucking stupid. <laughs> like, like, you're, an, you're an idiot if you do that. Fucking rude. Like, that's just stupid. Stop Cause that. Because like, like you, you're like inventing well. new ways to be fucking so, so like no. slob over Marvel's knob or whatever. Like I, stop God, that. Pop culture occultism can be done well, but it's difficult. But when it's not done well, which is much more common, you result with things like the Pinkie Pie um, egregore. Or like oh, the, that, the, the, like, the people uh, who are like, I am I think that's funny. a <laughs> sexual relationship with Tom Hiddleston's Loki. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They, they, Snape, they've made a Loki wives. Uh, and now they're fucking it. Like, it's, it's Snape wives. That's how you get Snape wives. Snape wives. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> I, okay, I think those Final people Fantasy are like House. objectively what is our very funny though. I think it's funny, but I also don't think it's healthy. <laughs> no, it's it's objectively not healthy. It's just it's. It's one of these things that, like, you kind of, it sounds so fucking stupid and ridiculous, like, ah, oh, how, it's like, how silly these people oh, that, like, shit. like, started worshipping Final Fantasy characters, and then you kind of take a step back, and you're like, oh my god, this is, like, the misuse of these occult concepts, like, destroyed people's lives, <laughs> like, oh, this, is yeah. a life end this is a life-ending experience, like, you can't come back from this, like, this is, it's one of those things that makes you kind of take a step back, and you're like, oh, this occult shit is, like, serious, I need to, oh, like, yeah, be careful about how I talk about this in public. <laughs> I have, um, a really great question from chat, which is changing topics a little. I have a question specifically from Green Hexagons. I have a question specifically about ceremonial magic. I've always been kind of fascinated with it, but could never quite commit into jumping into the deep end, so to speak. Maybe this is a slightly personal question, but what's like the experience of, say, going through a proper ceremonial ritual? The vibes, if you will. That's going to depend on the ritual, but this is really yeah, a Riley question. It depends on the ritual. Um, 
First, you start with a banishing that like <laughs> clears everything away. First, um, you do the LDR fee. <laughs> yeah, and, well, and then you. That's how it goes. What do yeah. you want from me? That's the procedure. You Point do it. Laugh at you have to do it. Point Your to ritual laugh. magic okay. is cringe so and stupid. Let's codify this. And let's codify. So you're starting with getting a blank slate. What next? It, it's it starts to get you into trance. Um, it starts to it, it like it. You, you can begin to fuck with things once you know the kind of mundane world is cleared away. Your head is already a little like blitzed, and then you're doing a ritual. Usually, to get the the shit flowing, there, there's there's various things that you can do to kind of like up the sexometer of the thing. You know what I? Uh, yeah, not literal uh, sex. Like you know, you want the the, the atmosphere to fuck. And then yeah. yeah, and then you have um your ritual proper. Uh, it's usually like actually you would have like maybe some invocations and like like uh, a few like um, you it's know where you prayers start to, kind of so, to assembling to the things. pieces. Uh, and then then you have like your ritual proper and that um, when you really get into it like your like operation that you're doing, um, uh, it feels somewhere between a dream and an acid trip. Um, that's the kind of experience that I can describe it as. Riley, um, you would are. You, would you say it's fair to say for someone who, let's say, like, let's say someone whose mind isn't as fruitful, they haven't done acid before, would you say it's fair to say that it is something that is almost entirely its own experience and it is very difficult to compare it to other things innately oh, because of what you're doing? You can barely compare it to those things. It's it's its own thing. Uh, you, yeah. Like, until you until you've learned to like really get into it like get into the trance uh get into like the the operation the fucking work you know um mm -hmm. it you 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 can't really put it into words because yeah. it's, it's such an all encompassing on a mental physical spiritual level like it's it's all of these things together and you really can't like um compare it to anything because but you know, just, like you, you, as an you end up like, being like single pointedly moving in this like one direction, and then um, usually I uh, I give some time for whatever needs to come through uh, after the like major operations to like come through, and that's when a lot of like major like stuff like um, happens for me, um, and uh, I let that happen until it like kind of peters out. Um, and I usually, like, you know, I'm barely back down, and then I, uh, um, I will end with the same, like, things that I opened with, the banishings and whatnot, um, and, uh, gradually come back down to earth and, like, try to integrate the experience. Um, usually, you know, uh, when you're just starting out, It'll kind of be a frustrating little, like, theatrical experience that you won't have a lot of, um, like, you know, you won't, when you're first learning the LBRP, you won't be able to see a flaming blue pentagram. You might be able to get a little bit of, like, uh, you know, black on black static in the shape of a pentagram when you close your eyes. That's a good start. That's, you know, that's normal. And it's not, um, you shouldn't be ashamed of like that. That's progress. And, you know, sometimes you won't be able to like do shit at all. Sometimes your, your juice is just not working. Um, but when it, when it really gets going, like you are seeing the heavens open up to you, like on a personal level, it's speaking to you. It is, um, you know, beyond geometry, beyond, um, you know, narrative beyond like it's i don't know how like you know I, with, like, with drugs just... with drugs it's kind of the entire contents of your brain is is dumped on you and all the like stupid like you know fucking cartoons and fart jokes you've seen like uh, will will pop into your head with with magic it's like all the like most important like sacred like elements of your life are like present and um and matter and uh like the stuff that doesn't matter is kind of cleared away and that's what like the vision brings to you um 
I don't know. I, w yeah. I don't know if I'm answering this question properly. I really hope I am. I think I think that was a good way to answer no, it. No, no. Like, just another perspective. One of the things that initially got me into, like, even a little bit of ritual magic was actually martial arts. And there's mm. a, like... Like, the, the techniques that they teach you in a lot of, like, very traditional, like... Like, Okinawan martial arts are extremely similar to, um... Like... Hang on, something is fucking beeping. Yeah, you're the I think beeper. someone set off. Hello? Yes, someone set off my smoke alarm. Hang on. Take your time. I'll keep talking to chat while you're doing this. Time to beat it with a. Uh, beat it uh with a Zen beat is Sakara says on the topic of ritual. Do you think there's a dividing line between ritual and the magic sense? I and ritual designed for safety purposes, like checking rope before rock climbing. Yeah, uh, yeah, Riley. What's like the ceremonial magic equivalent of like fastening your seatbelts? Um. Well, really, you, you've got to, like, make sure you're in a good, like, headspace to do practice, first of all. Um, uh, I, there's, there's, I, I, I like to make sure my entire, like, house is clean. Um, mm. there's a, there's a, there's a quote from Uncle Al, uh, which is, uh, cleanliness is close to godliness and had better yeah. come first. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you want your environment to be like conducive to the ritual itself and like be organized yes. like for the like um uh benefit Hello, of the I'm ritual back, like, the um hi uh uh you don't want it to be like a mess really um you you want to have the space to work and the like mental space to work because when your environment is cluttered your mind is cluttered your mind is cluttered rituals are like have, I, uh, when I um when I do ritual magic I like to go into my bathroom and turn off all the lights <laughs> I actually the I have an, a question yeah. from early, uh it's quiet. Wait, there, there's but the, the the general question is like what is like the the, the like seat belts and stuff and seat oh, belts okay, okay. is like you know having your banishings done having all of your like protective stuff in order and like I was saying like having your house clean having your, your mental state like in a right, row right um, yeah yeah uh, okay, some, people, some people say that you shouldn't have food in your body uh, some people say that you should. Some people, uh, a lot of people do get high before they do ritual work. I can't. It, like, it, 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 I can't get into trance if I'm high. I feel like that would fuck um, me up. Like, uh, I... <laughs> like, so I get, I can get high if I'm doing mantra work, which is a very like different experience. Yeah. Uh, but you still have these like visual like things that like come to you, um, and you still get into trance with it. Like, but it's it. Every little like, like mystical practice has its own kind of like zone that you get into, and it feels different. Like it physically yeah. feels different. So there's there's tremendous diversity in like what different ritual states feel oh. like, what different trance states feel like. It's like and the goals of them and how like their failure states oh. and how you set them up. Like it's it's there's a tremendous yeah. diversity. Some people there. some actually... people when they're doing magic like they're not their head is not anywhere different than their like normal space. They're just lighting some incense and like laying out some food and it's just not different yeah. for them. Like that but that's is a my really great opinion. segue. That is oh. a very fantastic segue. There's a question okay. that was asked earlier that I really wanted to get into cuz it's a fantastic question. Um is it possible to do magic without a spiritual framework? Oh. Yeah. Uh, mm. Chaos magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it like, depends what you mean by like spiritual framework, but like yeah. it's kind of yeah, like no matter like, what your answer is, there 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 are Even, atheist elamites. I mean, if that's what you're asking, like what do you you uh, like? I mean, the flame is a spiritual is framework. Is, framework. is it possible to do magic without like? I I say that there's no there's no one who doesn't have a spiritual framework. Like there's there's that like we said earlier point. this this that's a fair uh, argument. Yeah, the Aleister Crowley like quote. You know, you're doing magic all the time. The point of becoming a magician is to learn how to do it well. Uh, yeah. Everyone has a spiritual framework they're working from. The point is to like kind of get your ducks in a row and have a spiritual framework that makes sense and doesn't contradict itself and doesn't like, you know, right. lead to like or unnecessary frustration. I would contradicts say... itself in interesting and evocative ways. Yeah. Or yeah, would... contradicts itself in a fun way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would say you can argue it's very possible to do magic unconsciously, like in just. Well, that's actually there... yes. That... The quote means yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cause like if the question, I, if we're re-asking that question in a slightly different way to try and like uh, better understand it, that kind of ties into the question of is it possible to accidentally do magic? <laughs> hey, hang on. There's yeah. a very fu very fun thought experiment brought up in uh, chat. 
Human person line asks, is there any load-bearing coconut in your magic? Oh, fun. Something technically useless that exists because every time you try to remove it, everything falls apart, but you don't necessarily know why. Unironically, that is why I am so obsessed with, like, different occult systems' is, like, atomic theories. Because, like... Everything ties back to what you think the physical world is, like, made of. Like, everything is kind of built on, like, the this idea of the fundamental structure of reality. So if you, like, if you, if you change, like, one little thing about how you think fire works in a lot of, like, occult systems, the entire thing is completely fucked. Uh, yeah. I, I would also posit, um, is there any load-bearing coconut? This is me personally. I'm not Wiccan. I still say so would it be after every spell I do. I, I just mm. never went away. It doesn't feel right if I don't say because I started that way because I was like twelve. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> if I stop I was... doing it, it doesn't feel real. When I was a Mormon child, I literally could not go to sleep unless I said prayers before I like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, load bearing coconut in my practice. Hmm. Banishing. Banishing ritual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Point and laugh at the Thelemite. <laughs> All of you people are carrying around a bunch of energy, and you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start saying. My that vibes people. are pure, and your Ry are fucked. Riley voice. You motherfuckers just aren't sufficiently grounded. <laughs> You're not fault. grounded. You don't have you no. don't have your feet below the hells and your head above the heavens. You don't. You're just not there. Not I'm a lot of people eight. saying this. <laughs> uh, lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram is a ritual to make you based. Okay, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. That's kind Fuck of what off. it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh, I'm that's so funny. I, fucking. Uh, you, you guys would know a very funny like. Oh, hang on, hang on. Before you, before you move on, before you move on, I, I think mine is the dipping of the ink. Like it's, there's this whole thing in Egyptian, like oh. in Egyptian rituals of like, you know, if you're if you're a scribe before you write, you like pour out a little bit of your ink to like as an offering to Thoth. And I've mm. been doing that for like ten years now. Oh wow! <laughs> I do that like every yeah. single morning. I, 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 I do I do a whole. Th I have a whole thing with ballpoint pens that I don't want to talk about publicly, but it's fine. <laughs> I'd love to hear about this. Yeah, yeah me too. Later, not, not later. <laughs> love to hear about I will this. tell this. I will talk about this off stream because, like, I'm like a public figure, and I don't want people like being weird about my practice. Yeah. But um, I also love something that I know rationally, but I've never really said it explicitly like this. If I want to do a spell and I don't want to have to personally put in the energy. That's when I default to Fagels. That's mm. when I act as a deal broker instead of doing magic. Right, because right. Because if I make a deal, I don't have to worry about how it's happening. That's not my responsibility. Right, right. <laughs> and it's good that you, like, know that. Of, like, oh, man, I have, I have encountered this very specific type of problem, and I have this very established type of solution. Like, there you go. Now, that, now it exists yeah. in a system, and you can, like, incorporate it into other things, and you know what gaps it's filling, and if you find something else to fill that gap, you know where to put it. Like, it's... That is a healthy way to do that. Yeah, like, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't curse a bloodline, but if someone gave me enough debt, I could probably have it done. Right, through other there you go. Meetings. As long as you put in the work. Yeah, yeah, it would be a fucking pain in the ass to write that contract, Jesus fucking Christ, but it, it'd right, be theoretically right. possible. There you go. Oh, man. So that's another coconut. If I'm ever do going into a fade deal, it's because I don't feel like doing proper spell work myself, or I don't think I'd be able yep. to do it by myself. Right, right. I think okay. I think the load bearing coconut for a lot of like contemporary systems that like people don't talk about everything being based on like is Enochian, like to some extent. Like yeah. everything that yeah. came after Enochian is kind of has Enochian in it, and you you can't like. Well, and you know, even Enochian uh... is like the, the sort of load-bearing coconut of Enochian is like very specific like Jewish mystical ideas about the relationship to the Hebrew language. Yeah, and... oh my god, no, that, that, the Hebrew language is the load-bearing coconut of Western magic, which sucks <laughs> because like, like, like yeah. people are like, stop, 
you know, you're you're appropriating this, and it's like, but that's the load bearing coconut. You can't, like all of right. these it's, different traditions that have existed for five hundred years. Like, and it's not just Western magic. It's like like <laughs> Christianity has incorporated it. It's like a part of Islam. Like it's. It's it everywhere. has become the load, like the the very specific Jewish spiritual relationship to the Hebrew language has become like the load bearing coconut for like the entirety of Western spirituality. It's, it's the platonic <laughs> ideal of the load bearing coconut. Like if you remove that, then you have to fully restructure everything. You know, right. and, the and, load and bearing the, coconut like, of and... witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's. That's well, but kind then, then of a fun idea. Like, 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 like yes. what, what, what do we use to replace it? We use to, re uh, yeah. we use to replace it Enochian or uh, Andrew Chumbly's like uh, Dream yeah. Alphabet. But like, those but are you, those are still based on the same that, thing. Yeah, like, even after that, you go, it. Like, is it, okay. if it's referential, is it still like too similar to be functionally used? Okay, the way Riley, you know, I've been this? I've been working. I've been playing around in that exact space, and I have some I have some theorizing to do with you off stream, because Is... I've I've been considering basing a magical alphabet off of IPA. Uh... I um, we inter have the international so phonetic alphabet. In... Okay. Ooh, that's cool. Then you get into like weird tantra stuff because they they have these like things about syllables and letters specifically. You say like, that like so weird this, tantra this thing, stuff this thing, is like, bad. This thing, like you you. Like no, I, I what what I'm saying is like, I would be speaking out of like a, a thing which I barely have any knowledge of. But like like the, the mm, specific true. like science of like mantra construction and like stuff like, uh, it has a lot of similarity to like like Kabbalah things. But like, isn't that because right, right. it is? And, and they also have like forty six letters. You know like, um, right. And uh, those letters are also like forming like a hundred or so like syllables that right, you use right. like and um and they all like affect each other in specific ways and like they some things can be fit together and other things can't it's yeah you know what i mean yeah 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 i get you i get you it's um but like interesting different rules but it also like you very so, like, quickly Kashmiri the Shaivism same... is like what you mm. know like how we were saying before a uh, chat like what religions would you like if, if you weren't what you are, like, be... In, and then my number one was Kashmiri Shaivism, because it has this relationship language that, like, is so deeply, like, intimate, like, to me, right. like, that, uh, like all, all these letters have, like, specific formulae that are associated with them that, like, uh, oh, God, I can't even begin right, to describe, right. like, um, and, uh, you know, you can get a you can get a greater degree of specificity with a greater degree of letters that make different sounds. You know. Um, right, right. Here, Bean, I think it's time for a new question. Yeah. Bean, what do you got? Okay. Um, real quick before new question, um, Smiles, that that discussion right there was the first that. couple of discussion that CT had, and I just want to be reminiscent for. Aww. 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 Nice. <laughs> um, that is sweet. <laughs> um, there's not a lot of. I mean, yeah. How does the drip play into magic? <laughs> it's not a Good the question, drip, Warden. The drip is like literally not... central to magic. The drip is essential <laughs> to magic. Yes. I have. Magic. I have. Okay. <laughs> Let me look at you. Arthur Let me right now and something. tell me that Arthur can't cast fucking fireball right now. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you a, a thing that I've got in my possession? Yeah. I have a two hundred dollar silk robe with oh my God, things yeah. embroidered into it, magical symbols embroidered oh, into yeah. it. Um, it's it's one of my prized possessions. The drip fucks severely, and you can really like like I can't express like how like nice it is to get into it. Like with with the, with your drip, like I've like recommendations. Uh, practice naked until you've got some drip. Like <laughs> yeah, no, like like, just, like, yeah. like don't like don't don't wear or or like at least wear something special. Dress up nice to do your magic. Like have have like, a thing you, you only wear head. when you're doing magic. I would yeah. even take it a step part of why you wear the karate just, bathrobes. <laughs> I would even take it a step further, not just outfit, but like it makeup if you do makeup, hair if you do your hair, skin care, like wash Very your, true. Very like, true. Oh, I, yeah, no, before I do a lot of work, I will shower and wash my face and brush my teeth and I, same, you know. Uh, same, same, same. I, I, I um <laughs> it's I part of why just, I do a lot I, of I usually just comb my hair straight back. I don't look you know, all cute when I'm doing magic, but like, I look, I I look serious. Yep. 
That's part of why I do a lot of my ritual shit in the bathroom. I like to I like to completely submerge myself in water. I do a lot of the like folk magic adjacent beliefs relating to makeup and like how it affects. Like I'll be like if you're if you have bad aim in a shooting game, put on mascara and your aim gets better. <laughs> <laughs> that I fully ascribe to. Like, I have a lot of beliefs like that where it's like, you know, use basic, like, use makeup as a conduit to, like, as a, rela as a rela relational thing to different, like, types of right. magic that you want to do. It works because you make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chat. I. To, to, to feed into this in a, in a bit more of a of a stinkier sense, I, I'm fucking wearing cowboy boots right now. You guys can't see it. Yeah. It's adding nothing. It's. Right. It's. It, it just. It is not adding right. nothing. And that's that is what it's adding. Yeah. Yeah, it's adding the feels right. Fucking everyone in chat, I want you right now, if you're ever feeling down and you're feeling low, spell of immediate confidence. Take a bright red lipstick and apply it to your lips. <laughs> alright, yeah, alright, okay, okay. It is it is currently uh eight fifty here. Uh -huh. How how are we doing like endurance wise? I it we could maybe wrap up here if y'all are if y'all are feeling up to it. We could keep going for another hour or so. I I want to. I really do, but I mm -hmm. also have a wife who loves me. All um, right. You, I think. You, I, go? Why don't we Why don't we do Why don't we do final questions from chat? Like we'll do maybe one or two more, and I think maybe 9 p.m. will mark I, the end of the uh, first wizard symposium. I I do have I have a quick proposition. Okay. May was willing to sub out for Riley if you if we if the rest of us three yeah. want to keep going. May would be great. I, do have I I kind of want to go eat dinner. Okay, if you <laughs> want to go eat dinner, then we can um we can let you go do that. Uh, let Riley go uh, spend time with wife. Bean, while you and I stick around, we can bring May and keep answering questions. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Um. Okay. I could, uh, I, could, I might just be in chat like, um, right. actualing you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might. I, if depending on oh, how. Oh wait, yeah, CT. Goes. The other day, the other day there was I, it bothered me. I don't know if you saw my comments, but like, someone was like, Alistair Crowley and Jack Parsons in the Mojave Desert doing rituals. Alistair Crowley was never doing rituals in the Mojave Desert. No, no, he, uh, I no. saw that, you, you and I knew it would make you mad. Those, accurate, those two were alive at the same. I, yeah, no. No, they were just... alive at the same time. They corresponded. Like they they oh, wrote letters okay. to each other. Yeah, um, they sent letters. Around, like, Crowley wasn't around for that. <laughs> When no, he, no. When it's, he was around. Well, no, he was around for the Babylon work, and he was pissed about it. Um, yeah, he, he, Babylon he, he, like, work talks shit on them. The Babylon work is like, <laughs> I am the fourth chapter of the Book of the Law, and he's like, if, No, you're not. We want this to is my book. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> and but it's also like Jack Parsons fucking loved Crowley. Like they exchanged letters a lot. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it was at the it was at the it was like late Crowley when he was like a heroin addict living in like hostels and everything. Yeah. Like he was he was he old. Was, he was he not was... doing much ritual work at the time. Anyway, he anyway. was he was living in a retirement home teaching uh, math and music, um, and was not at that time addicted to heroin. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Anyway. And you know they were sending him, they were sending him chocolates and shit in the mail because he was always asking for chocolates. And stuff. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, anyway, right. we can take a few more questions. Um, a few while, more while questions. These two are the right out. Let's see. Many traditions focus on smoking from a substance perspective, but what about the aesthetics? Uh, check the vod. We earlier talked about a lot about the aesthetics of magic and how it relates, like the theatrics of it, and how that relates. Um, Smoke so is cool. Smoke is cool. cool. Literally, people will use Candles smoke rock. to try. Like, if you have the smoke in front of the mirror, like, people will burn whatever it is, sometimes tobacco, like, in front of the mirror so that you can, like, see the smoke move. Like, aesthetically, like, the the movement and visual of smoke it, it can be very important to practice. And, uh, uh, you know, I... I like... Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't. I, I don't know about uh, like smoking like cigars or like pipes in in practice because like that's kind yeah, of like a vice that you wouldn't want to invite into like something so intentional, right. uh, unless you only ever do it in practice. You know, like. Oh. Right, know. right, all right. Uh, any more questions? And then I think the good one to end your two being here on would be: What's the best kind of spell to try for a beginner? Baby's what? first spell. <laughs> what do you think it should be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the LVRP. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I would say try giving someone else a tarot reading, like real, like, d and don't be, don't like bitch out, you know. Don't be like, oh, haha, it's like, isn't it awkward that I'm giving a tarot reading? Like, really 
give it your all. Give it your pussy into it. Your whole pussy into it. Speaking of beginning things that you can put your pussy into, um, Austin Osmond's Austin Osmond spares uh, sigil method, and then uh, charging. Uh, the sigil with an orgasm. Um, I, that, that, um, that's what I okay. That's how I started magic. That's cutting my. That was what I cut my teeth on. Um, and that's intense. Uh, it's good. It's good. You can. You can. Honestly, some people. That's their only practice, and they they just build on it and build on it and build on it, and it's uh, it gets elaborate and be good for them. And you can honestly build a practice just off of the the. Um, I recommend, although I hate him now. Gordon White wrote a very good article on sigils called Wish Granting Squiggles. Um, that details a pretty faithful uh, spare method, and also you don't have to do anything sexual for that one. Um, you can just uh, do what he recommends and like meditate on the sigil until it like um, is done cooking, basically. Um, but like that that practice. Is kind of what Help got me into things. Um, okay, like, here you are. yeah, uh, yeah wish granting oh. wiggles. And I uh, would... Gordon yeah, White, yeah. you're yeah. being. Why don't you close this out for the evening? Matters. Yes, uh, I would. Maybe I personally would pause it. Do something that you can see the results of. Right. Well, right. See if it mm. worked. That's mm. my personal three cents. Very good. <laughs> Do a sigil. You can see the results of. And yeah. That's, um, oh yeah. The most important thing. Uh, I never do, but everyone always says is the most important thing is that you record your results and, uh, like, conditions and, you know, keep a magical diary. Do people and, do that? Oh, yeah. People oh, are very yeah. thankful about that, actually. Like, oh. that, um, that's, that's a thing that I, I, I kind of feel inadequate compared to my other occultists about because, like, I have a bunch of people around me who aren't doing as much magic as me, but are keeping track, and I, I think they're they're probably doing better than me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so with, I, that, I, with that lovely note... So, um, um, so CT and Riley, you guys are on your way out. If you guys want to do a quick favor to everybody uh, in chat, if you guys have like, any last little pieces of like reading material, posts, articles that you mentioned, have the links to, Put that shit in stream live blogging so people can uh, follow up on it. And uh, yeah. do me a favor and have a wonderful rest of your evening, guys. Yeah, I will catch um, you all later. Right on. So, uh, resources that people want to look into. Um, the, 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 the thing that I give to everybody, um, it's, it's called the Big Blue Brick for a reason. It's a thousand pages, uh, but it'll introduce you to magic. Uh, it's Alistair Crowley's book four. Drop uh, Libra uh, ABA. Drop a what? link in. Drop a link in the uh, Discord for, yeah, so yeah, people yeah. can find it. Yeah. All right. Fairly well, everyone. Later. I gotta find a link now. All right. Bye bye. All right. I am going to boo 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 at May, wherever she is. All right. You, Thank you. You still, it's been you still so around? Fun. You you heading out, Riley? No, I'm gonna go see my wife now. Because right on. I love you. Cool. Later. All right. Bye bye, gamers. It's been a good time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And let's move. I, I'm adding May. Uh, Dion is here. I'm also on the same mic. Swag. Cool. Hey. Uh, one second, please. Send a quick message. Oh, fuck. I accidentally pinned a message. Huh? <laughs> well, hang on. What was it? Let me see. Uh, yay. <laughs> yay! Yay! Uh, I'm, I'm like, get that shit out of here. So... Um, yes. Yeah, um, I got the. <laughs> I, I was about to call us the Wizard B team. That feels. That's mean. That, I'm not, that is I, mean. I, I, to, I, res I, res I rescind chat, that. To clarify for chat, you yeah. still can ask questions. You're just working yeah. with a very different basis of knowledge here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm very, um, you know, Hellenic, Greco Egyptian. I'm a yeah. heathen. I, yeah. I'm a heathen, and I refuse to explain what my system is. Yes, I know what it is. I just won't tell you. Yeah. God. <laughs> the wizard the Earlier... wizard night has transitioned to wizard day, even though it is later in the night. Earlier someone asked me um to explain contract magic because they'd only seen it in fiction and like how it works in real life. And the quickest and most concise way to answer that is it's just spirit work. <laughs> <laughs>
It's just spirit work with yeah. more steps in the specific context. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's working with a class of spirits in the specific way that that yeah. spirit, group of spirit works. Uh, like, Dion, Voleth wants to know how you steal spells from Odin. You, talk. I... None of this is legal, legally actionable, okay? <laughs> like, how to steal spells to from Odin in Minecraft. <laughs> We all need to agree that none of this. <laughs> um, so um, the do, short answer is that do I don't. I come up with them myself instead, and that motherfucker doesn't get to say shit to me. There you go. There you have it. Spells from Odin is how you get your own spells stolen. Trying to steal. <laughs> I'm not. I'm. <laughs> you gargle. You make sure that when you go down, you cup the nuts. Uh, War, War wants to know, do Norse gods prefer original flavor or onion depends on the god? <laughs> These are the um, kinds of questions I'm, I'm, I'm more Oh, if you have Gnostic questions, I'm pretty equipped for those. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, yeah. Can I just, hold on, can I brag about my girlfriend for a second? What if I said no? Uh, would you be mad? <laughs> um, I would hang up. I would leave. Um, <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, Innskeeper and Riley, who were on, who was on here earlier, um, whenever they get questions about Gnosticism directed at them, they direct those people to May instead, so, like... At least mm. about Ophidian, Ophite Gnosticism, specifically. Puts a little gold star on you. Would, oh. would the Demiurge be a good YouTuber? No, no. Not. No, no, no. He would not. He would, I, he would I, out... Thirty-six hours of content every day. You, okay, you, you know, you know what the, you know what the, you know what the Demiurge's YouTube channel would be. You know those like really... machinima. No, no, not no, not machinima. I'm talking like those like bunk, um, like ancient technology videos of like people building like old house, like the, ancient oh huts God. that like wouldn't like nobody built and would collapse instantly. <laughs> that are like um, time uh, that are time lapse to like. Uh, cut out all like the other construction crew that were involved. But would the demiurge be a good Twitch streamer? Yes. N I, I don't. Hmm. Wait, what? Okay, I'm curious. But what do you think? The very, yeah, yeah, ex explain. very engaging. What's that even mean? There's a lot going on on the screen. It's very loud. I would enjoy it. It would be garish and awful. Do you, do you think the demiurge would be a uh, a cruelty squad player? The, the super beginner book that was recommended? I don't remember a book. I know we were talking about tarot for a super yeah, I'm baby so, beginner. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thing. Unfortunately, if, if uh, Riley didn't like it in uh, in the server, uh, we do not know. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll try and I will... Everyone asks about it right now. Yeah, everybody go <laughs> bother her DMs right now, please. If I had to guess if Riley gave a recommendation for for like an easy beginner magic book uh she was probably joking no it was the big blue brick um it was the big it blue brick. yeah yeah it, it was, was it was the big, big it was it was made in earnest forget, yes i forget its actual name and like who wrote it though uh riley said it in chat yeah, right riley is still in chat as uh dead nines so uh everybody attack everybody attack <laughs> Mojave sending drip subliminal, subliminal messages. <laughs> yeah, just me doing shopping. Hey, yeah, if, if you if you you guys were asking about like how is drip a tie into magic, like guys, you watch this Twitch channel, you guys know. <laughs> like a lot of the a lot of the way I I, uh, I I dress up on Twitch is like I I don't like dress like this on um on like usually like. The way I'm dressed now, I did not go to work like this. I did not like make dinner, like, make and eat dinner looking like this. But like, you might think that's not has nothing to do with magic. It does. It's performance. It's dramatics. It's all all the fucking same shit. Uh, Even I don't have any drip right now. So yeah, yeah, I'm getting get this naked. I'm surprised nobody redeemed new hat this whole time. You young bucks. Except the woods. You can't do that in the woods. What's your uh, magical opinion on this man? Lake Mojave Glamour Master Veleth, I am ripping out your prostate. I want to go fishing <laughs> with this man. What's What's really funny is like, um, I sent in this one selfie, and he was like, um, if you if I if I knew you didn't know anything about magic, I would say you were glamouring right now, and I was like, bitch, that's like the one thing I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one thing I kind of understand. 
God, me and Inns fucking having an autism moment about Glamoury. Just all the time. Would, like, and literally and name any minute in the day, that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. It's very Co funny. Me and they are constantly locked in a psionic battle with each other. Uh, like, so, oh, so, oh, so Wormtube actually, actually wants to know what that is. Bean, do you want to take that? Thanks, Yeah, what, what, do, you mean, what do we mean by glamour? The most basic level is a type of magic with the intent being making something appear in any way that is either not how it generally looks or adding nuance to how it presents. Yeah. Oh, that was it pretty good. It is commonly associated with the folk. Um, surprise, surprise. That's why I know a lot about it. Um, it is different from illusion in a meaningful way that I wouldn't be able to describe without being a little bit drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to make like, myself a drink. I'll be right back. Go ahead. But <laughs> like, I posit, I personally posit that Glamoury is confidently believing a thing to be the case potently enough that other people see it the way you believe it to be. Very... A great example of this historically would be how people believe werewolves worked at a certain point in church history. Hmm. They believe that yep. they were sleepwalkers who dreamed about being a wolf so strongly that they looked like a wolf to people who saw them. Oh, yes, I've That's heard that idea. Yeah. Me with oh, my gender? That, oh, it's abs it is such a fucking, um, like, gender passing thing. Mm -hmm. It's, f yeah. Um, I get, I get, like, cause, like, I will, I will, like, go into work sometimes and, like, be in a certain headspace so strongly that, like, even on, like, the drive through mic where, like, you can only hear my voice, I will get, like, mammed. And, like, <laughs> I'm not, like, pitching my voice or anything. I'm not doing it consciously. It just happens. Nice. <sighs> But yeah, so that's how I would describe glamour at its at its, its at its basic level. There's books out there for glamoury, but there's a lot more woo in the field than I would like there to be. Um, yeah. I would suggest if you want to get a working experience with it, to just read folk tales. Mhm. Mm yeah, that is fair. Yeah. Um, any other questions from chat? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, right, now, right now we're going to the dress up mode. Everybody's uh, everybody's protecting Everyone's their shit. <laughs> eh. Uh, if I tell people my name and they can steal it, can I steal someone's gender if they tell me about it? Depends on the framework within which you are recognizing the existence of a name. Man, I I hate to say it, but uh, the answer is always it's complicated. Um, so like, also telling someone your name is not they. So like, they could theoretically like use it on paperwork, or like use it in a in a story. But th that's not what you mean in a magical yeah. sense with like, stealing someone's name. You and even then, in a magical sense, there's a big difference between the Egyptian concept of the name, the folk concept of the name, and the like. Mm -hmm. Let's say the the uh, the oh. folk, not folk banger. What's the fucking the the fucking the people who had the furry part of the soul but like was Norse-ish vaguely you know what I'm nearby the Egyptian I, conception of soul is complicated when, when, whenever my uh, Starbucks unionizes I think it will be very fun if we could all collectively bargain to start operating on fave rules and steal people's names who we take orders I think that would be very <laughs> funny I <laughs> don't tempt Bean <laughs> what? What's the matter? What is your problem with this? Uh, <laughs> what is the, what is the matter, Bean? <laughs> what have I said? It's not um, the matter. Bean is yes, vibrating the with the great intensity. I I I I've made I've made this joke around her before. She's concept. on this. <laughs> the finished concept. Um, I'm actually vibrating at a pretty like stable rate. I'm just because I'm in full like moderator mode, not a cultist mode. So this is great and easy for me. I can do this for five hours. Yeah, same, yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm much. Uh, I'm, I'm also I'm also in moderator and not g gamer mode right now. I'm doing very absent-minded shit. Um, what is uh? Do y'all have an, what is everyone's favorite magical thing? Slash, do you have an object that's just for magic, like a wander book or something that is natronium and warden? I'm combining two. Questions. Yeah. Oh, uh, I find stuff in the woods. I won't tell you what things, but I have found many things in the woods. I have like a few um gifts and stuff that I've gotten that like 
um, I've literally never actually used, but I've kept on my person, like, back when I was, like, in school and everything, because, like, I didn't feel like leaving the house without them, and it just, so, and, like, having them in my hands for just being absent-minded would, like, help me focus, and, uh, but, like, <laughs> Wouldn't like do like anything very complex, but I have like a I have like a deck of like cards over here that I never actually like used or used to play with anything. But no, I fucking had it on me all the time. What was that? Um, what were saying, Dion? I said that's ritual, baby. Also, mm -hmm. Mohawk has been chat Barbie doll for a while. This is dress up streamer, dress up game. My favorite, my favorite um object would probably be I've got a big ass skeleton key. That I use Ooh. if I like, you know, you know when you like, you do a spell and you're like, shit, fuck, I forgot something. What about what about that stick? What about that stick? I never like that stick. It's yeah, I oh I love my stick, but like, <laughs> it's my favorite is the key because the the stick is like, a lot of people have staves. Mine happens to be pretty cool because it's about as tall as me, made of ash wood and fucking thick enough where I could beat someone to death with it. But like. It's not a ritual pause button, it's a ritual, if, let's say, you close, you finish, you gotta go back in, change something. That's what the key is for. The key is to open things. Surprise, surprise. That's my favorite, because it's un <laughs> It's not the most common. Oh, yeah. Sedis Sakara has a very funny question. Corniest thing someone's given you because they found out you were into oh, occult oh. stuff, but they don't oh, the really know one. what they're doing. Uh, my, my mother and her husband, for Christmas, got me, um, a book titled Self-Care for Witches. Oh, God. That's, uh... That's so funny. That's, that's so very, funny. very funny. Like, funny. what a way to find out that your parents, like, know. You know? Yeah, that's... Because, like, I, I, I know exactly, I, I literally know exactly what kind of book that is. Like, you don't even it, have to tell me. Uh, it's about 70 pages long. It's full of bullet lists. It's, oh, God, it's obnoxious. It's green. <laughs> it's green. It's I, green. I, I, this is an experience that, like, I know me and CT share, and other popular occult bloggers might also share. Um, what people try to give in ask boxes is always very um, wild. Yeah. Uh, do do, do, do had... you also get like the I offer sort of shit sometimes, Bean? Uh, no, not sometimes. Because you have to understand, I actively do dead names. Oh, right? oh no, no. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about like the the name trading thing. I'm talking like specifically like the way uh, no. CT yeah, would get like the whole. What I'm saying is that is in that same vein of school. It's I so offer X or oh. Y, and um, so. Oh, so you can thank <laughs> Warden. I offer five bucks. Thanks for the gift sub. We, we, those are the ones we appreciate the most. I gotta say, that's like the opposite yeah. of cringe. But so, like, I have had people offer. I've had people try to offer trauma memories. I've had people try to offer true names. Well, uh, those I accept because fuck it. If, if you're gonna be stupid, <laughs> you're not my responsibility. It's... I've, if, I, I've had people offer souls, their own souls, yep. before. Um, I've had, I've had people try to offer their firstborn once. I've had people try to just, just ridiculous shit. Like, I... <laughs> yeah, one of, uh, one of the first offerings I ever got was actually, um, someone's entire self. What the fuck? Hello? Chill out, take it down a few notches. Y'all, I'm not a therapist. Did they, did, they send anything, did, they, did, did they send anything weird like that to the Sealy Court blog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was it was one of the first interactions. It was like, so if I if I like go in yep. into into the mushroom circle, like with intent to lose myself, what'll I do? And it's like I it, what it says on the tin, bud. Yeah, like and they're like, cool, I'm gonna do that, I'm doing that, like, right now with you in your ass box, and I, like, didn't Bro. respond because there's no good way to respond to that. Like, it's not cute to be depressed at me, to be honest. I have a, I have a, um, <laughs> I have a funny, I have a, I have a bit of a thought experiment for you guys. Um, oh so, uh, me. I uh -huh. don't really, uh, I don't, I don't like practice or know things necessarily. I'm very 
uh, I am definitely very curious, but like, despite all of that shit, I don't, I, despite like not having any sort of like engagement with the occult in a serious way, I'm somehow friends with all of you people. Is there like, <laughs> what like historical occultist does that make me, if any? Oh, um, you're the guy that wrote Dracula. <laughs> the guy that wrote Dracula. I'm, I'm Rob Stoker. That, this is something you should have asked while like CT and Riley were around because they I, I now just know this. no more historical occultists. Than Man. Us. God, the problem is I know the occultists, but they all a lot of them did have people who were just in their circle but weren't doing occultism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> no, Dolly's too weird and was doing occultism. Um, like a normal person whose entire friend group was wizards. <laughs> Basically, you're, yeah. You're Tad Strange from Gravity Falls. <laughs> sure, who cares? I would actually have to, like research this question because I know I know several groups where there could be others. I'm not sure if they didn't do magic though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Seb did admit that they do a little bit of magic. I like. I, like, acknowledge that, like, some of, like, the unconscious behaviors I do, like, could be construed as magic. It's not like I have constructed anything around this. But, like, I know when I, I, know when I see it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you know that doctor who was with, like, Mary Shelley and Byron all the time? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Eighth, eighth is here, says, oh, welcome to the chat, it says, occultist version of Stu from what we do in the shadows. That's really that's really funny, actually. I, God, um, so, like, <clears throat> I've been a witch, and I've known I was a witch for, like, a while and stuff, and, like, I started hanging out with Inns in January, and I, I turned to my girlfriend, and I'm like, like you realize you've been like researching occult stuff, right? Like that that makes you a wizard. You're a wizard. You're purposefully mm -hmm. re researching occult stuff. Oh. She's like, no, you're not. Yeah, I've been researching occultism before this year. <laughs> Where do each of you fall on the wizard researcher spectrum? Uh, parentheses plane question mark. Okay, so I was heavy on the researcher. Now I'm a lot more towards the wizard side of things because I kind of yeah. want to experiment with everything. So that makes sense. Soren wants to know what, if any, is the difference between a wizard and a magician. And this is one of those questions that, like, it depends. Like, everyone's gonna have their own answer. Nothing. In okay. my opinion, a wizard is kind of like a wizard studies books a magician studies vibes i would posit it it is semantics but it is semantics in a field where words are much more important than they can normally be and what words you use and why you're using them can be much more important than it normally mm -hmm. is see in that line actually i consider myself more a magician than a wizard actually because magician is the greco-egyptian word for magic, hmm. for a practical magical practitioner, there are a bunch of other ones, but magician is what they kind of converged into. That's but the earlier thing that we did immediately kind of switch off before we all answered. Yeah. Where do we fall on the wizard researcher spectrum plane? Maybe oh. we're the only one that answered, and then we switched. Oh, I, I almost never do research. Most of like the sort of book knowledge that I have is um, thrown at me very like at, at fucking terminal velocity speeds by my <laughs> friends and most of the time i dodge but sometimes i don't <laughs> um i that's tough because like like i said i haven't like um i just i think most of the researcher and that like i mean even even still i haven't read a lot of books but like the thing is i like learning about all this stuff i just don't really plan to do anything with it <laughs> with any of this knowledge it's like Me i just giggles it yeah, I just think it's a. <laughs> I, I I just think it's like cool things to learn about, so I can like make cool art and like write cool books. It it like informs a lot of how I really a lot of this is how, so uh, helps approach how I uh like how I write and engage with fiction. Honestly, oh, like, yeah, if you guys um if if any of you guys have like um <laughs> I haven't I, I've gone what uh how long are we doing this three hours without mentioning my uh, my book um. I, uh, you did your book. When? <laughs> uh, earlier, but uh, continue. 
Um, yeah, like, a lot, like, part of how I uh, constructed my magic system and that was based off of very loose things that I understand about, about magic and how it works and how I see it as a, as a living thing. Um, and, like, that is constantly being informed and being built upon, and I... I don't plan to do that for anything myself, but I want to like explore and experiment with that in a place I am comfortable, and that is writing things down. That is with that is by telling stories, which is the thing I think I enjoy doing more than most things. It's kind and... of I had a little bit of a reverse experience with that recently. Mm -hmm. Magic has made me finally comfortable to start drawing again since like middle school. Huh, nice. Because I'm making comfortable with drawing just for myself. Yeah, no yeah, that's, it, like, in, in, in a way, like, writing for me is also kind of just, like, a, it is a, it is me entering a ritual space, and a lot of it is also very construction, constructed. Riley was mentioning a lot of, like, various components that go into, uh, ceremony magic, uh, the way you dress, the way, like, the, the state of your body, um, your senses. I, I I consider all of those things before I go and sit down, and part of that is because it helps control the uh, ADHD symptoms, and another oh, is yeah. kind of that reason. I, uh, I'm i going to go back a little bit earlier. A question that was asked by Warden, um, what flavor profile oh, is associated with, with, one. with a cult slash magic slash ritual? Like, how extreme spiciness can create a dopamine slash high response? Ooh. Huh. I use flavors on my tongue for different rituals. Flavor profile will be associated with the cult. Um, okay, so it's... For, okay, so if I was gonna pick, it's non-capsaicin spiciness, so like wasabi or something else. Like, it's... Good it's it's that secret sixth thing, okay? <laughs> it's kind of that bolt of revelation, like the um, Gnostic lightning revelation ideas. I personally would say that, like, the flavor I'm about to describe is not for magic as a whole because, you know, you can't, there's no one thing you're going to ever be able to use to describe magic as a whole. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, like, for me specifically, you ever eat perfume? No. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Can't say I have. Ever, I mean, I'm here, did, I'm here with you. One time my brother did you ever spray me. Did you ever spray perfume directly into your mouth? Absolutely. Can't say I have. <laughs> Do you, or the chloroseptic throat spray? Chloroseptic throat spray? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's the taste. Yeah, for that's, me, for that's what I close. do. That's pretty close that's to like what I'm getting at with the wasabi thing. Like imagine if chloroseptic instead of being cherry flavored was just chloroseptic. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least that's kind of how it feels when you get like one of those revelations, you know, where it's like that mm. sudden, like, oh, my sinuses are open. Fuck. <laughs> I would like even... more modern occult work with flavors. I I would even argue like it's not even always that for revelations because like for me it's mainly when I I, uh, I interact things with more smells than taste. Um, mm. Also, though, real quick thing: can animals other than humans do magic? Please, I want to teach my roommate. It's blunt. That is like, <laughs> do other animals meaningfully yes. have a society? Do yes. other animals meaningfully so have language? As a Native American, yes. Animals can do magic. You ever seen an elephant? You ever, no, fuck you. Don't quote you ever, fucking. Don't you, seen, don't you dare. You ever, you, you, ever see, you ever seen a crow? Yeah. You're a crow. Yeah, Corvids. We ever met that? I won't argue with. Cats. I I knew you, you know wouldn't. How, I knew you'd get behind that. You know how dogs got to spin around in a little circle before they can lay down. You know how I, cats got a paw at the litter box. You know, you you went like they're just. What are they even pawing at? It's nothing. Yeah. Yep. Cats have. Uh, let's see other shit. Other also, shit. like. Anything else, you know, it depends yeah. on the framework you're going at this with, because, like, okay, can they do glamours? I, I would argue no, but, like, can they do magic? I mean, there's 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 several religions Fucking, where Fucking, okay. Yeah. 
real quick interlude. The reason elephants don't worship the moon is because the book that came from is the same dude who said ostriches eat metal and are impervious to bladed weaponry. When the elder got you again. <laughs> Have you ever seen... I mean, I, I would definitely describe elder? ostriches as impervious to bladed weaponry. I don't know about you. Pliny, Pliny the elder. <laughs> Pliny the elder. Anything that comes from him is is wrong on principle. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, hey, no. Uh, hey, Jamie, do you have any, like, fun burning wizard questions you want to ask us? See, uh, since he's not here, but we're, we're good. We're good to answer shit. Wait, here. Says, I haven't ever heard of a Mycenaean practice, but that's an era that interests me. Has anyone heard of that? Okay, okay. Free. That's older than most of the stuff I work with. Let me think back to the Mycenaeans. I, if I remember correctly, heavily focused oh. on Poseidon as a Chthonic god, or something that would become Poseidon, I think. Mm. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Dion, Jamie has a fun question. What's a good what's... drunk spell to cast? Tear apart a motherfucker with your girls. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, like liter literally, just like. Uh, Jamie, you are one step closer to Bacchanalia. Just keep going, buddy. <laughs> just, just, just go, there, go, like, I cast Sparagmos. You are, you are fighting with Jack, James, have you considered, have you considered perhaps the lesser banishing ritual? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right, 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 was in, right was in chat, we don't need anyone else to say that. <laughs> No, I'm not in voice anymore. Yeah, yeah, J Jamie, Jamie performed the Jamie performed the summon stinky boy ritual. Um, um yeah, no, oh, yeah, no, like I, I perform drunk is go in the darkness. Go in the dark, yeah. Get oh, being drunk in the dark. The dark. Rules. I, I have done that like legitimately. Like I, just I will off in the darkness while drunk. I shouldn't have. Don't do that. Don't I will do say that. that I will say though, one of the I, I've talked about this experience a couple of times playing Hades, um, but one of the most just like fucking um, I don't even know how to describe the experience of um, being just wine drunk off my ass playing through Hades and like being in like so enraptured and involved in the experience that the moment Eurydice came on screen, I just started weeping. <laughs> like I the. Look, I, I would I would never I would never describe myself as a magician. I would never describe myself as a practitioner. But like a mystic? Maybe. <laughs> a Modern mystic. day mystic. Lake Mojave. Eh. I'm, I'm not, whatever I'm, the I'm opposite actually, of all of these things is. That's I'm actually so not My aim fucking sucks. So I'm, you should scream from a cave. Um I'm yeah, going I might be from a cave. That'd be fun. That's with a squeaky hammer. <laughs> You'd have to catch me first. Um, this would be easy. I would simply go, "Hey, Bean, my good friend Bean, I am here. Come over here so that I may embrace you." And you would, you would run over, and then we would hug. And then if you ever said that, that to me, I would run so fast <laughs> in the opposite that's direction. True. That's true. You would. Um, here's one. Does the pocket knife I carry around more security blanket than anything else have magical properties? Things have okay. Different schools of thought. We've got platonics. Magical properties are descended down from God and filtered through various um, stars and such. And thusly, then yes, it would have magical properties because everything has magical properties that are delineated out by the stars and thusly divinity aspects of divinity that are given to it. Right, right. Moving that aside. You have the like an, an animistic lens where like yes it would have importance because it is something that you've taken care of obviously if you've had it for a while and you keep it with your security blanket and like you'd um you'd have like there's that certain you've bit humanized it in a way um but like the moral of the story is yes it's magic because it functions as a security blanket to you because i mean Fuck, it's, Inns wrote a whole um, essay about the magic of a knife. Like... Yeah. And poetry about it. Like, it's... Most things that, that can that be piece, made to be magical. From... The question is the question is not if, but is more so how and how elegantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I personally argue that a, um, 
a person walking with a knife is in the image of a few different divinities. Thinks about fucking, um, thinks about that one faith. Thinks about that one faith where the, the guys are supposed to carry a knife on them. Oh, you're talking about, um, oh, starts with an S, I want to say, an Indian faith. Sikhism! Sikhism, Being yeah. Scottish, yes. Being from Being fucking, Scottish. uh, Glasgow. I... Yeah. Smiles. I think it's base. <laughs> oh my god, um, W4 is getting into a lot of stuff that I could, like, talk for hours on. Like, oh, there are connections uh, to Aphrodite and Ishtar and... <laughs> Um, the okay. Dionysus is central to the whole Orphic thing. Like, I would have to explain yeah. all of Orphis Orphanism to you. Orphism. Orf Jamie, to Jamie you. asks, uh, Orph uh, asking if Red Dead has accidental spells. Wait, actually, what even are accidental spells? Do they exist? Okay. So we I actually addressed this earlier. Um, okay, but before you recap what y'all said earlier, I want to give my, like, undiluted opinion, which is, like... Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so big surprise, it depends on how you define a few terms. But if you consider a spell to be a ritual with an intended effect that does not really correlate to the actions taken, like, them shits is everywhere. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, them shits is everywhere. The the certain breathing you do before you pull a trigger. You know, the, um, the like, oh, I always get on my horse from the left side. You know? People are made of rituals, like, all of your habits and, you know, most of your actions are just built of, like, things you saw other people do, and that 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 is magic. That is accidental spell constantly. And to mm -hmm. recap earlier, um, but to, re to recap earlier, it was basically the same thing. It was to... Uh, to paraphrase, because I, I have a b very bad memory, though I encourage you to go back into the VOD and look at it, but, yes. um... Basically, yes, you can do accidental magic because, um, just because, because it, it makes sense. We we had a good reason to as why, I just can't remember it. Um, you know, <laughs> whenever you say goodbye, it's short for God be with you, and it's, yep. it's, it's a spell of protection. See you later is you'll be okay. When you exchange money for goods and services, you are participating in a kind of ritual. That's true, too. The products and services that support this stream are, in a way, performing a complex hyper sigil. No, that's not the world yeah. looking for. But there's a cat hyper, on the hyper sigil. Okay, it kills you not, dead. Kills you dead. Not the world I was looking for. <laughs> my, my I, I don't. I don't. I don't pick my sponsors. As sigils of to melt me some iron. To die you know what, Jamie? Yeah, the products and services that protect this stream. <laughs> Ah, uh, God bless you, Raytheon. Oh, there was a question a little bit back acting about um, use of dances or mm, yeah, um, martial dancing art. and martial art. Ritual. Yeah, that's come up a couple times. I mean, yeah, monks, monks be doing that shit. Um, people like different cultures be dancing. Well, they were asking if we did anything like that. None of your business. Which is just. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I beat my yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Priestess of uh, Priestess of Spiders uh, says this is not a uh, question, but I want to recommend an occult text. Um, uh, please let us you. please let us know, and if you would kindly share it in the Discord server, please. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. I do whirling sometimes. Help me get into a trance state, which is inspired by the um, oh god, am I going to remember correctly? I think it's the Sunni Islamic. Uh, whirling dervishes, among other Su groups uh, who have Su done uh, Sufi. That's a, that's a Sufi. Shia thing. Right, Sufi. I, I'm oh, really no. bad I, at the different sects of Islam. Um, Suck. <laughs> but yeah, the idea, I like, I like, you know, kind of clearing my head by getting really dizzy first. Okay. <laughs> do you guys want to know, here's a very important motion that'll help with every single spell you'll ever do ever. What you need to do is... You need to, um, you need to get on the floor, and you need to make slow, soapy circles on the linoleum. No, I can't from the call. Do not! <laughs> um, let's see. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, there was, there was some, there were people talk, uh, asking in chat earlier about, like, the importance, like, what is it okay. with the importance of sounds and music and, uh, even instruments 
in uh, Magic. Okay. And like, okay. I think that just, I think that just ne necessarily connects back to the importance of, uh, of performance and the dramatic in how mag Magic works essentially. Yeah, um, and, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, um, a, a little thought I've been kind of noodling with uh, before we, um, uh, before we started this. You guys, you guys want to know a very, like, you want to know, like, are you trying to, like, conduct your own ritual magic at home? Are you trying to, like, figure out, like, how to do this? A good blueprint is to think about live music. To think mm -hmm. about, like, the way that it's constructed and the way that works and the... And, and the result it is trying to achieve and just, like, think of, like, how the construction of performance and the construction of live arts. And you'll find... You, Honestly, like that's a very good example. There's a lot of ritual of ritual craft involved in that. It's very interesting to me. Um, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No, you go. Um. So, in a lot of magic, you kind of need to get into a ritual space first, and the more senses you can engage to get there, the better it is. Some practices of course also use like mind-altering substances and that sort of thing to sort of get the practitioners into a very particular headspace. Yeah. It's very useful for that. Um, also, kind of coming from a platonic angle, the fact that there are these sounds and the way to arrange these sounds such that they sound engaging and compelling without any words or direct communications. That feels like fundamentally some sort of holy language. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's more going on here than just typical communication. Yeah. Right. And there's some right. fundamental truth to music in a way. There is something that's u very like universally understood. And a lot of that has to do with like, um, I don't know, man, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking know. I, ha I had this thought like hours ago, but um, it's a, a, man, it was lost. Uh, I mean, for rituals that ask you to speak aloud, can writing the phrases work as a substitute for a non-verbal person? Would calligraphy help add that theatricality to it? Yes and yes. Yeah, shit. M M magic is jazz. Do it however feels right. Yeah. I, I um, a lot of my practice is, pr is writing out prayer strips. Mm -hmm. And then burning uh, them. Yeah, so, I've, yeah, I've, absolutely. I've, I've, I've done that uh, for, for a, uh, I consider myself a very, uh, I, I'm, I've talked about this before, I'm a very auditory person, so, like, you know, noises and sounds and music are, like, really, uh, like, you know, really make the brain tingle, but, like, I also, uh, go into non-verbal mode when, especially, like, when I'm, like, usually when I enter the kind of headspace where I do this, it's late, and I'm out of, like, I, I just, I just, I don't have any energy to do anything else but write whatever the fuck is going on in my brain. So yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll fucking do that. But you, you have to ask, you have to ask yourself, why did the person who wrote X Y Z ritual want this to be spoken aloud? Mm. If they wanted it to, go. let's say, be heard by some sort of, uh, let some some sort of spirit, then writing it out and burning it, and you know, denote it and like fanning out the smoke over a wide area could occupy a very similar role you have to look at the structure of the spell and see how you can do it in ways that occupy the same niche yes now if it's like trying to like do something like evoke an image within yourself maybe drawing out symbols could be useful um do any of us be uh are any of us multilingual uh in cocom not really i'm not yeah me yeah Ah, okay. Ward had a fun I'm question. For those who speak multiple three. languages, do y'all prefer a specific language? Um, um, that might be... If people in chat have a answer to that, do I, I... Okay, so I don't speak a bunch of languages, but I, I do know how to write shorthand. And I prefer that, so... Because it's my own... My own specific shorthand, so I feel like people are less likely to be able to like see my notes and mm. pick apart my my spell right, right. and in fact like i kind of feel embarrassed like saying it not like embarrassed but like a little paranoid like n none of you start you know what i mean like because part of making sure at least for me that a spell can't fall apart includes like obfuscating 
what exactly it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. oh, um, that makes sense. Just so that, like, yeah, so that people can't basically counter spell me. Mm. Counter spell. If I could, I would do all my spell work in Welsh. If I knew the language, yeah. all of my spell work would be done in Welsh. Yeah, Vel saying I don't speak it, but wondering if it would make sense uh, to make spells in Old English slash Old Norse. Absolutely, it does. Yeah, it's just up to you if it makes sense to you. Just don't get any of it tattooed on you. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, that's <laughs> the red flags there. There's some there's some books I read that are often written in a kind of like mm, stilted form, I'll say. And, like, it mm. takes work to read them. I think that's kind of the point of writing in that way and writing in a more archaic fashion. <laughs> it makes you think about every every part, which is an important part of constructing a spell. I am a... Yeah. Do, do, do. Oh. I can get... Ah! Wait, hang on. You know, earlier they were talking about um ritual spaces. And I really mm -hmm. like using outdoor spaces when it's possible. It's obviously kind of hard to set up sometimes. Yep. Okay, I was thinking about ritual space, like the inner mind thing, and like I don't know, it just threw me for a loop for a second. <laughs> I was like, babe, and then I realized there were like several definitions of the of the term. Yeah. Yes. Thoughts on picking up a new language to do magic in, so you don't accidentally slash thoughtlessly do magic in your preferred language? <sighs> I mean, if that's real- I mean, if that's really something you're worried about, like, yeah. sure. Um, it, it, I don't think honestly, it's necessary, like, but... I, I, think pick, I think learning an entire new language just to perform magic better is, in and of itself, like, like, fucking sure. Like... That. That's a component of of spell. That um, is a component. I don't I don't think it makes like if you if you're trying to avoid making your own like you know native tongue like less magical, um, I suppose that makes sense. Like depend um, like just depending. Yeah, I I don't think it would work for me personally because I don't think that. So I was raised in the south. And in the South, we have this very deep-rooted cultural concept of speaking into existence. And I think yes. trying to avoid that would actually make me more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. From experience. That, that, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Uh, Mojave, is there a rude which would empower streamers if implemented into the overlay? Uh, yes, um, and some secret yeah. of darkness. It's You're so right. Also, this emote that I made. <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to comment on that earlier, but the discussion was happening. That's really fucking cool. I think, I think there it's might so... be, like, a straight-up rune that would be basically for that example. Like, basically that exa exactly. If you can, if you can, if you can find out what that is, fucking tell me. And Zeus, that's the one, I think. Um, order, breath, God's meaning, inspiration, communication. That would probably be the go-to Twitch streaming. And, and Zeus, and, and Sam. Sam. Mm. Ah! <laughs> we did it, boys! <laughs> uh, most most magical the guns. Whole time. The most magical guns always the, um, the occult is the revolver. single action army. It's the revolver. I genuinely believe it's the revolver. I will fight about that. That and the Winchester. But the Winchester got devalued Submit! from fucking uh, <laughs> Supernatural. So, like, just the revolver. Um, exp explain. Yeah. Just the revolver, I feel like, is the only gun that I think has enough lore built around it, specifically with relations to the Wild West, to have that occult basis to be considered a magic, like a, the, be, to be considered the most magical gun. I think like something from canon. Cons cons too. Consider the AK-47. The AK-47, I, I feel it's too close. Nice. It's close. It's close and it's close. <laughs> I, because I, I feel like I actually have a little bit more, um, like to to go on here with specifically the AK forty seven, um, with regards to its connotations, like as a cheap gun in the hands of like um, like the AK forty seven was the one that the Russians bought and then shipped out 
and like yes. put in into non-Russian hands. Yeah, yeah the a, the Kalashnikov is like very rarely used in in Russia. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But like, um, like it has a symbology to it. It has this sort of like simultaneously like oppressive but also liberating thing going on. Yeah. And I feel like, give it another 20 years. Give it another 20 years and come back to me. Another 20 years. Oh, um, another, another 20, 20, years, another 20 years. cannons that, like, destroyed fortresses that had held for, like, centuries. But I wouldn't Hold consider a like cannon Harry. to be a gun. It's a cannon. Okay, it's I guess you're right. Thing. Cannon's not a gun. Okay, but fine. There are, okay, oh, fine. There could be there could be magical like, small arms and heavy artillery. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you show up with your with your magic revolver. The, the, the Priests of Spiders is a very strong point. Like I was gonna say, the AK-47 is like on flags and shit. Yeah, no, the AK-47 as um symbol symbolatry, I think, is more potent than the AK-47 as a magical gun. It like is in itself a sigil. Yeah, but a sigil, a sigil do not a magic gun make. Fair, fair. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think the AK-47 makes a much better symbol than it does a magic gun. Hmm. Um, I will say usually the magic is on the bullets. I, yeah. like, usually you don't enchant the gun, although I have seen, uh, Constantine definitely did it. <laughs> 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 oh my god, that was a You enchant movie. the bullets. Um, I think that this is because, so like as an actual ritual, the, the enchanting part of the ritual, um, it's a lot easier to stay focused for the entirety of the forging of a bullet than for the entirety of a forging of a gun. That would be a massive piece of ritual work. Hmm, that's good um, So, yeah. Also, it's easier to focus the intent because it's one mm -hmm. shot, one target. You're literally putting someone's name on it. Yeah. Like, that 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 uh, already has weight and connotations and like story and like che yeah. Cheating uh, says, "What are the cowboys of the Wild West tales if not mythical figures in Americana?" So I believe they're tools to be magic. Here's yeah. the thing about that though: it's like when when it comes to like most like uh like Western mythical figures, it's not like the okay. Uh, let's let's consider the example of Excalibur. Um, in like. In, yep. medieval, in medieval legend, in Arthurian legend, and whatnot, there is at, there. There's not a whole lot of legendary swordsmen going around. There are like, there. You have like weapons that are instruments of a higher power enchanted upon them by God and whatnot. Um, that's not really a thing in like Western yep. mythos, like. You have like a lot of it had a lot of it's much more individualized and much more focused on the talent and ind and prowess of the individual rather than uh, any sort of magical properties bestowed upon them necessarily. So I think you were kind of confusing like the myth of Arthur for all of the myths because like his That's knights have like individual stories and individual powers that, you know, are sort of, like, retroactively assigned as being, quote-unquote, from God, but this is a little bit of, like, a Christianization of, like, the local myths and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of, like, retroactively, where it's like, oh, it was from God, he's not, like, a superhero, because that would be cringe, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a yes. saint, he's a saint. Um, well, heroes never heard of him. But, yeah. <laughs> local God, definitely not. Um... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was, I was, I was, I was mostly just pulling like the first, like, uh, the first magical weapon that came to mind. Necessary, <laughs> like, I, I know, I know, I might have simplified, uh, simplified like a, a massive body of mythology by doing that just then. I, I can kind of give an example of the cowboy being used for a type of magic. What do you got? Um, I mean, this is dark, but cigarette advertising. <sighs> hmm. The image was well, invoked to create an effect. Ugh. Fucking cigarette people. advertising and like is fucking um. I think cigarette advertising in itself is a kind of magic, you know. It is, yeah. Marketing like, is. I mean, CT has said it. I'm not saying anything new, but marketing is magic, and it's awful. Yeah. I I think I think the I think cigarette advertising uh, cigarette advertising is so much more like 
insidious and understands that on a way that none of us will understand. Like, no, no one is going to be able to uh, sell harmful substances by making them feminist, except for maybe Goop. Except for Goop. <laughs> except for maybe yeah, Goop. Yeah, actually, Marlboro started out as a women's cigarette company. Yeah! And the filters yeah. were red so that they wouldn't show your lipstick stain, which is unsightly, I guess. I always thought it was kind of sexy, but hey, I just work here. Mm. Um, and, but, and, sorry, and, and the, guy, and the guy who... The guy who pioneered that, Edward Bernays, the same fucking cunt who helped overthrow Guatemala, uh, the democratically elected leader of Guatemala. He need an advertiser to our spell. He's the <laughs> same quick. guy that invented antiperspirant deodorant, is he? Bernays? I don't think so. I'm gonna go look up who invented antiperspirant. Need an advertiser to counter spell. Read Das Capital. <laughs> 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 no, actually, actually, can I, um, Read the communist give manifesto. a homeless person $20. <laughs> give a homeless there person you go. $20. Yeah. You gotta do both, okay? Anti-advertiser anti counterspell, uh, get someone to gift you a subscription to, You block uh, is this cheating. digital against it, yes. <laughs> you block is an anti-advertiser sigil. Who we will cares? say that you are allowed to ask for ads here, you know? Ask, Don't... You, yeah, you can ask okay. for ads and you can ask for subs. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. You can ask for a sub in the chat. That's not, like, allowed... It's... Okay, so I read the Twitch, like, rules lately because I'm autistic. And mm -hmm. um, it said that it was like a like a how to conduct yourself thingy and it was like you shouldn't ask for subs because that's just not cool just hope you get one nah i can no. fuck that shit literally like, if y'all you're having ads and if somebody's feeling generous they might give you they might you know that's fine yeah yeah, yeah. that's fucking who cares <laughs> gonna, gonna go buy marlboro after this not gonna lie don't do that feminine? that's the wrong idea radiant idiot <laughs> don't Is let there... the dark ad magicians win um are there, yeah, are there uh, any more questions going on in the chat? The ad magicians win. Mm. Oh. What is going on? So Jamie, thanks for gifting this up to oh. Priestess of Spiders. Thanks so much, buddy. Spiders. You're the best. Spider, spider, spider. Um, spider, spider. Um, we're, at the, we're, at the po uh, the, we're at the point where the wizard chat is like a reaching less intensity that I will abide by my, if a hype train happens, I'll just go out and fucking rob a train. I would want you to do that even if the wizard chat was going full swing. That would I, 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 I showed restraint while CT and Riley were here because they Something get Something from revolted. much earlier, uh, much earlier, what is the most esoteric animal? I know the oh. answer of- <laughs> Oh, baby! <laughs> what do what y'all say? Snake. You... snake. It's the snake I was gonna me. say worm, but it's like for similar reasons. Hmm. Because I, the I'm snake gonna... is the dragon. I'm going to say eel, but for entirely different reasons, actually. What's your reason? That's fair. The eel is also kind well, of snake. Be, no, in this context, eel is not a snake. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> okay, you say that. No, but it is. But in this context, it isn't because oh. what I'm saying is the eel is the most esoteric animal. I'm saying it in reference to ah. A, the way the fuck the eel is fucked, and the B, eel as an aspect of the Morrigan that ties into that specifically oh, because yeah. the troll is much more widely known. Everything. Um, if I wanted to say a snake, I would just say a snake. <laughs> the actual answer, though, is in humans. Like, the actual... Uh, oh, that's two, what, is the most what is the most esoteric? The people who keep fucking making esoterica? Yeah, like, it's like... <laughs> the there you go. Actual, true we did it, boys. Is... Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not actually a secret third thing, you guys. It's us. No. I don't know. Anybody knows we've got some crazy esoteric they aren't telling us. Yeah, but, like, they're never <laughs> gonna tell us. No, I'll never let you know, humans. Don't could you, could you imagine the magical the secrets <laughs> that are uh, contained by horses? Ima imagine if they could speak what knowledge we would gain. Um, plastic bag scary. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a plastic bag sigil. <laughs> The plastic bag banishing, banishing ritual. But you know what? They are right. Plastic's bad. Don't use it. This is literally that like diagram of the guy trying to explain to his dog not to bark when he's on call. Uh huh. That's what we're trying to do here. Um, <laughs> can see ghosts and spirits. 
that reminds about me. Food. I should, I, I, I should really start up an Etsy shop, and one of the things I should sell is like crocheted reusable shopping bags. Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh yeah, you were thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, you do fuck. crochet. Um, thing with the esoteric, a um card bag for me. Oh, hmm. I can, I can, I can whip that out in like literally like two hours. Okay, it's good because my um rider weight <coughs> case is getting a little bit old and ratty. <laughs> um, <coughs> man, excuse me. Eels are fun... great. I love eels. Any other fun questions yep. in chat? Uh, uh, there was a I... relief esoteric animal, and I wanna, <laughs> I wanna posit jellyfish at least as a starting point. That's a. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that. that. That's pretty good. I. Well, would... they're, they're just they're plastic bags. They got nothing I fucking going on. I would say that yeah. the least esoteric animal would be the animal, an animal that, an hypothetical animal that we fully understand. We fully understand it. We know the entirety of how it works. We we pretty we pretty clearly understand jellyfish. We've taken them entirely like well, a part of I think I think just the most mundane animal imaginable. So like pigeons, squirrels. No, are... pigeons are <laughs> because no, pigeons no, and squirrels no. occupy. They occupy like they fixate the human and mind. It can't be ants because they 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 do agriculture. So like cockroaches. No, no, no cockroaches. There's... You could I make hate... some pretty interesting stuff about cockroaches. I, I hate them, but they're not the least exoteric thing on the planet, that's for sure. Uh, I train think those oh, are If you guys want to go watch oh. me commit crimes. Oh, uh, bottle flies. The ones with eight genes that they have little fruit flies that, like, we've literally, ge like, we play with them genetically. It's how we train geneticists. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. I would say, if, I would say anything that we understand fully and in its entirety. Something like that would be the least esoteric. Animal, yeah, so they only have no eight, esoteric to it. They only have eight chromosomes or something. And like they, they have a really short like, or they have eight expressible genes, and like we pretty much completely map their entire genome and can play with it like gods. We can we can have them be born without legs. We can have them be uh, or hatch really, um, without um, like they'll pupate and have no wings. You know what I mean? Like, we can I... choose the color of their eyes, the length of their proboscis. Like we, we can fuck up some flies, y'all. I'm feeling Gnostic fury rise it's against humanity fucking, now. Fucking with genes is flesh alchemy. The reason I don't yeah. think it's alchemy in this context is because it is. I think it is not. I think you could make a very interesting alchemical thing with it. I do not think it is inherently alchemical. I, so here's the thing, right? Okay, and I've got. I've got a different emotional response to this sort of thing because I grew up on a ranch. And the thing is that these geneticists in like learning how to play with these genes, they're learning the shape of how to defeat cancer. And I I am fully willing to take everyone's conscience upon me right now and say that that's good. That's good. <laughs> I, 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 I do genuinely care much more about like human suffering and and like that long term versus like them them flies live like a fucked up life for twelve hours max. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. And on the one hand, very cool to kind of be able to play God. But I'm not like opposed to playing uh, God. And on the other means. other hand, I've been assigned flesh avatar by like several <laughs> men. Uh, to go back to a much earlier question that I think is a good one to say here now that the tone's kind of shifted. Um, what is a piece of media that isn't necessarily a cult, but it, you can you really like how you can read it if you do it through an occult? Oh, lens? oh my God! I was literally thinking that earlier today. So, mm -hmm. hmm. I have one that's gonna throw y'all off. But I'm gonna like wait. Y'all go first. Every single one of you knows my answer. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I know. Getting over it with Bennett Foddy. Uh -huh. It's yeah. Samstara. Yeah. It's a cycle. It's unforgiving. Uh -huh. I, I literally started the getting over it stream with, "Well, welcome to Samstara, everybody." <laughs> I, 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 I think it's I think not the everything whole, you can want. <laughs> I think the whole applying like, uh occult philosophy to Kingdom Hearts thing is, like, funny, but, like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think it's fun to, to look at it like that. I don't know if that's my answer, though. Um, hmm. I'll just think a bit harder about this. 
baby girl? Do you have one off the top of your head? Uh, it's a really hard question. Okay, because... I've got mine. I just recently finished watching um, almost the entirety of the show. We skipped a couple episodes yeah. in the first season. Um, but Venture Bros. Oh my god, you're so really cult. It is a cult. First of all, um, there there are like several wizard characters, and like their shit is oh. like Philemic. They they actually like they you know someone in the writers room like knew their shit okay they it's so funny it's so funny um, um there's there's this huge theme of like finding out that you are closer to the thing you hate than you want to admit um that the the combination of like fear and revulsion with like excitement and sexuality um there's a lot of there's a lot of butterfly imagery hmm. it's not subtle there are a lot of like queer characters people who are going through journeys who regret who who then go on to like grow and there, there's there's a lot of self-reflection there's there's a lot of literal occultism but there's also like this occult lens that i could take to almost every subplot Hang on, uh, J Jamie is going to bed and asking to cast a spell of big, uh, a sleepy spell for them. Oh, Good night, I will not, it will make your dreams weird. Ooh, right. you're so com <laughs> Ooh, you're so comfy. Oh, you're so cozy. Oh, there's some waddle dees bringing you a cup of hot cocoa. Just kind of roll over a little bit so that like the lip of the blankets can like get underneath your body and then roll you over the other up way. Under and your chin. Your roll way. around like a little burrito. Yeah. That's oh, what's Jamie. one actually I've really been enjoying thinking about in a cult way recently? Bee and puppy cat. Yes. Oh, I think, ooh. that don't serve a plot purpose but are so fascinating to watch. And, like, just thinking about those images of, like, this, uh, like, the obvious um, cuckoo bird parasite in just one little side scene that is still trying to be part of its bird family, or... The unkillable angry cockroach. Or grasshopper. Grasshopper is what it is. <laughs> it's great. And then there's Roy G. Biv, the hands of heaven. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're funny space warlocks. Roy G. Biv. I think wizardry is a, um unethical practice. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking. I mean, so yes. Where'd this come and from? Your help. For pennies I'm, a day, we can make it more unethical. -er. Uh, I my um my brain space is rapidly running out. <laughs> um, tucks you in, kisses you so gently. Kisses you so it's gently. Two a.m. in Beanland. Yeah, yeah, but like I felt, I woke up at like I woke up at like four, so like. <laughs> I feel well, yeah, like no shit. Yeah. The hours, the time, whereupon we all get a little silly. I thought it'd be significantly later for it to be a witching hour. No! Witching hours are like midnight to three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Bean, Bean is later than us. I was I'm, like, a, I'm ahead of you. Here with yeah. Bean. Yeah. Man. The occult hey, little... The brain too? <laughs> the no, occult Chris undertones just... of my little pony. Fucking you didn't no, have Chris to, you didn't have to read that, Bean. Come back here. I would Come talk about here. it. I like my little pony. You're all mean for no reason. And I'm not mean for no reason. I mean because gestures. Yeah. I mean because it makes because it has implications. <laughs> Dion has read a lot of episode summaries of that show to me. Yeah, we did a stream where um every time I died in the ring, I read an episode summary. Wow. Yeah. That. Hmm. It wasn't a bad way to consume the series, to be honest. Toad. Toad, he looks just like the toads in Minecraft. That's oh my exactly god, look at him go. Look. look at him go. I'm watching him go. Can you race frogs in this game? I Probably. wish. That'd be awesome. Man, Rockstar never great. lets us have anything. Eat him. You could draw a circle on the ground. You could race toads. <laughs> How esoteric are toads? I... Uh, a little, a little bit. <laughs> High medium, what? B plus. Um, yeah, B plus. Tier list. God, hey Bean, there's a stream idea oh. for us. That that sounds. 
You guys should do that. That'd Heroist be really fun. every fucking episode of My Little Pony. No, no. honey love. Wow. No, yep. animals wow. by how esoteric they are. <laughs> oh. Okay. Like on an F to S rank, you know? Like a tier yeah, list. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be bad at all. Yeah, That'd we should pretty, do that. That'd, that'd be funny. That would be really fun to have as like my wizard symposium. Yeah. Um, what was the question for? I don't even remember. My thoughts, they are slowly running out of my mind. You are both lightweights. Yeah, lightweights? Um, I've been doing this longer than you! <laughs> well, I... I'm also getting getting a little tired. It's been like four hours. Um, I think... I think we've I think we've reached a good uh good point to call this. Uh, okay. This was really really oh. fun. Thank you, uh, May and Dion for coming in late. Uh, B and Thick for showing up also. Uh, that was that was fucking fun. Uh, let me pop over to face cam. Do we have oh, someone? Jesus. Do we have someone to rate into? <laughs> I'm I'm looking for that right now. One second, please. Because if we don't, uh, I do. Is life. <laughs> I, <laughs> holy shit! For real? Let's see. Let me just uh, look at Twitch.tv. Uh, tell me your person, Bean, and then I'll, then I'll, uh, uh... Drew Sun, um, who's someone I met through, um, Hollow Knight. Right now, though, he is streaming God of War. Uh, how many people Which... in chat? Uh, 23. Oh, yeah, sure, let's see. Um, that sounds good. How do I spell that? Uh, it'll be Drew Sun. Yeah, how 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 do the I, oh, I Drew put Sun? it in the chat. I put it in the oh, chat. Oh, Sun. Yeah, 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 yeah I, th I, th I, th I thought you said Knight. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll send uh send everyone to this fellow. Um, Woo. Uh, boo. You know what? I'm just gonna give you guys um the aim. Army. The occult single action army. The weirdest, Good most night, esoteric handgun ever made. Copy and paste that when you raid into Drew's son. There are 59 of us. Uh, send some love to this fella. Way, way, way less followers going on than we do. I'm going to give a quick uh, shout out. Uh, Drew, son. Uh, join us in following this fella uh, as we uh, go uh, make their night real quickly. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Let me let that fade out. Uh, next stream uh, is going to be tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it will be the last stream before I take my break. Uh, go to them then if you want like a last little uh, hurrah of live Mojave content. Uh, I'll be uploading a bunch of shit, including this stream, into the YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to look for that. Uh, watch the VOD, catch up on all the fun questions we answered. Thank you all so much for coming. This was great. It was an honor to host this. Uh, Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that is the end of the...